hi, good evening. Is, is my iPhone enjoy kitchen and bar? Hello, everyone.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're waiting to see that we have quorum. Once we get enough members uh, of the license committee, we're going to join the meeting. Just uh, give us a couple of minutes more, please. Muy buenas tardes para todas las personas que hablan español. Uh, nada más uh, uh, queremos avisarles que en cuanto uh, tengamos los suficientes miembros del comité, la junta va a empezar. Gracias. Can they hear me? Yes. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. We can hear you. Yes. Excellent.
right? Oh, are you on? They can hear. Hello, everyone. Hello. At this point, I see that we have a quorum. We need uh, five members, and we have five. We have on board uh, Leo, Angel, Sis Mary, myself. So it's uh, Leo, Angel, Sis Mary, myself, and Rob. So that'll be five members, so we do have quorum. So at um, 6.36, I would like to call this meeting to order. Uh, first uh, thing that I'd like to uh, say is that we do have recordings, uh, translating services. And um, I believe it's uh, Lily that is doing the translating services. Uh, did I get your name uh, right, uh, Lily? Yes, she did. Yes, uh, can you please uh, let uh, the non-English speaking audience that if they do have a question that they uh, can raise their hand if they do not understand uh, what is being discussed, please. Uh, muy buenas noches, me llamo Lili, uh, soy intérprete y estoy aquí para ayudarles a todas las personas que necesiten ayuda. Uh, una de las cosas que les pedimos es que si por favor tienen alguna pregunta, uh, hay una um, aplicación donde le pueden apretar una manita donde... Uh, Dicen que quieren hacer una pregunta para poderles aclarar ciertas uh, uh, reglas y en la forma en que se va uh, haciendo esta junta. At this point, uh, let's go through uh, the process of introducing ourselves. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce all the members of the committee, uh, starting with uh, the vice chair. Angel, please introduce yourself. Sure. Good evening, everyone. My name is Angel Vasquez. I'm a member of the Community Board 12 um, and a member of this committee serving as the um, vice or assistant chair. Um, and I am also a local resident from the southern end of the Community Board um, down in the 160s. Thank you so much, Angel. At this point, I would like to recognize uh, for Robin to introduce himself. Robin. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Robin. I'm part of this community board for quite a bit, so welcome. Uh, thank you, Robin. At this point, I'd like to recognize uh, Simari. Simari Hernandez, you have the floor. Thank you, Isidro. Um, so my name is Simari Hernandez. I'm a new member this year, so I'm really exciting work here, and I work in the area. I no longer live up here, but glad to help out. Thank you so much, Simari. I'd like to now recognize uh, Leo. Leo, you have the floor. Hey everyone, happy to have everyone here at uh, today's license committee. Uh, it's my second year on the board, second year uh, in the license committee, and excited to share the, the floor with you guys tonight. Uh, thank you so much, Leo. Um, I would like to introduce now the staff office, uh, and I understand that um, 
Evanese is not uh, here, but uh, we do have Chanel on the floor. Uh, Chanel, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, this is Chanel, the community associate with Community Board 12. Good evening. Um, thank you, Chanel. And, and again, thanks uh, for all the work that you put uh, for the license committee. I know that the license committee is the one that generates uh, the most work and requires, uh, obviously, your attention consistently. So thank you so much for the work that you have done for the license committee. Uh, at this point, I see that we have a board member. And I would like uh, for Sally Fisher to please introduce herself as a board member. Sally, Sally Fisher. Thank you, Isidro. And thank you to the licensing committee for all the work you do. It's a, at times, I'm sure, a thankless job. But you guys are amazing. So I really appreciate all your work. And welcome to all the prospective applicants. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Sally. Uh, at this point, I don't see any other committee members, but if you do, when they do come along, anyone can feel free and just point out that uh, we do have a new uh, committee members. At this point, I'd like to introduce our uh, precinct, starting with the territory precinct. Uh, do we have the territory precinct on board? Hi. Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, um, I'm actually Lieutenant Jerez, SOL for the 33rd Precinct. I'm filling in for um, Kenneth Brown. Uh, welcome on board. Uh, is it uh, officer? Or, I'm sorry, you say you, uh, what's the title? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Welcome on board, uh, Lieutenant Jerez, uh, to the licensing committee of this uh, community board 12. Uh, I don't know if you've been familiar with uh, Lieutenant on how we proceed with licenses. Have you attended like other meetings before? I have. I actually attended one with um, Brown. Excellent, excellent. Uh, so feel free if you have any questions, you know, feel free and interject whenever you see fit. No problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we now have the, the the presence of the 34th precinct. Do we have anyone from the 34th precinct? Good afternoon, everyone. This is Officer Ames and Lieutenant Tavares from the 34th. Welcome on board, officers uh, Ames and Tavares, to uh, this meeting. Uh, quick note uh, before we start, and this has to do with how the committee uh, manages the work. And at this point, I'm going to ask uh, for volunteers to, uh, to take the minutes. And I would also like uh, to have someone also do uh, the resolutions. I'd like to take a break. Uh, but if not, then it falls on me to uh, write the resolutions. First, I would like to get uh, someone to do the minutes. I'll do the minutes, please. All right, so Simari will do uh, the minute. Angel, you would have the duty of calling uh, the agenda items. I can, um, I, but I, if you want, I can also take care of the resolutions this time around, you know, if you're comfortable with that. All right, we'll be very grateful. So what I'll do, um, Angel, is that I can send you a copy of uh, the template and I can send you like uh, the resolutions of two years past because it, most of them come like in a two year cycle. So mm -hmm. you only like, uh, you know, extrapolate uh, what is relevant from each uh, applicant. Perfect. Yeah, so if, if I don't send it to you like by tomorrow, like tomorrow night, feel free to hit me up. Yeah. Even, uh, during, even during the weekend, uh, because you know, we do have a short uh, time around. Yeah. The meeting is going to be uh, rather soon for the general board meeting, all right? Yep. Excellent. Uh, just, just quickly for the restaurants, I don't know if you know, but uh, the New York City Small Business uh, Services uh, just released a document, a grant, where restaurants can qualify for a $10,000 grant. Uh, so if you have uh, the need uh, to apply for this grant, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, I can send you uh, a link uh, later on. I have been so busy that I couldn't get the link on, uh, in, in place. But again, this was released today. It was announced like uh, some weeks ago, but the release of this grant uh, just came out late this afternoon. So I'll be able to send that out to you. Um, Chanel, if you so if you're so kind, please uh, mute yourself, if you're so kind. Uh, Shina, if you're so kind, please uh, uh, share my email address uh, with uh, everyone here. And anyone can send me a note so that I can send the link uh, for you to apply for this uh, really nice uh, grant. I'm sure it will help a lot. On that note, 
uh, the agenda today is a little bit different. We have uh, some ask by the SLA that uh, requires the input of our community board, our municipality, and that is for permission to uh, stay open 24-7 uh, during New Year's Eve. Uh, so that be an ask that, uh, uh, that the SLA has required the municipalities to have an input, uh, whether or not we can grant or recommend that some establishments stay open uh, for New Year's Eve. Uh, it's, it's a permit that is required, but we'll go to the specific at the very end. At uh, this point, uh, let me go through a process for the members that are new, uh, the new uh, merchants or the new operators. So the recommendation for those for the license committee is not a final deal. It's a recommendation that we're going to provide the board, the general board, whether or not the committee feels that you know your license uh, can be uh, renewed or granted, uh, and if all whatever you're asking can be uh, approved by the general board. It's, this is only a recommendation. And once uh, the general board votes on these uh, particular applications, uh, the board will send the SLA a recommendation. And it's not that that is set in stone that if we approve it, it's the final deal. No, it's a process. So please understand that. Also, uh, understand that you know if there is a, um, a stipulation whereby we ask you to submit specific documentations before the general board meeting and you do not submit the documents, uh, I reserve the right uh, to um, to kill the application, meaning to reverse the decision of the committee and make it into a negative vote. If you do not submit the documentations that if they are required uh, once the committee uh, votes on your particular application. And um, as a process, you know that we're going to listen to each applicant. After that, we're going to allow both uh, the precinct and the residents to have an input on the particular matter. And once we hear comments from different sides, then the committee is going to uh, meet and discuss uh, the particular, and then the committee will vote. At this point, I'd like to open up the floor for questions, if you have any, before we move on. Uh, seeing none, let's proceed uh, with the agenda, please. Angel. Alrighty. Um, we're going to start off with State Liquor Authority renewal licenses. Um, this is for an on-premise liquor license. The first applicant we have is the Pandering Pig Incorporated doing business as the Pandering Pig, located at 209 Pinehurst Avenue at the corner of West 187th Street. Do we have a representative? Yes, I'm right here. Uh, for the purpose of the minister, please tell your name, sir. Uh, my name is Senator O'Brien, S-E-N-A-T-O-R, <laughs> Senator like the office, O'Brien, O-B-R-I-E-N. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. And you are the representative or you're the owner? I'm the representative. I am the CIO of the corporation. My wife is the owner. Very well. Thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, at this point, for this particular applicant, this is a renewal. And I must say that the last time that I came to a committee and all the general board, uh, the board had no objection in renewing the license. Also of note, I will say that um, the last inspection from the health department they received an A. Uh, also, they posted a public notice and they submitted a complete questionnaire. At this point, um, I would like to turn over to uh, our 24th prison to see if they have any issues. Uh, Officer Aim, you have the floor. Officer Aim from the 34. Um, for this location, there is nothing for me to report. No 311 complaints and no 911 calls. Thank you so much. Do I have any uh, comments from our residents? Uh, seeing none. Uh, committee members. Seeing none and taking into account that they have submitted and completed all the requirements of the community, this community board, taking into account that the health inspection is an A and no pending issues, I recommend that we go to straight vote if there are no objections. Seeing none, Angel. 
Yes. Um, just one second, you see that I'm just going to have to capture the names of all the committee members that are on. So I've got you, I've got myself, I have Simari, um, I have Leo. Um, am I missing anyone? I believe there's Robin. 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 Thank you, Robin. And yeah, and that's that's all. Great. You see that? How do you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Simari. Yes. Leo. Yes. And Robin. Yes. That is a five zero zero vote, Chair. Thank you so much, Angel. So this application passes. Uh, congratulations, uh, Mr. O'Brien. We mm -hmm. hope that you continue doing good business for our community, and we wish you all the best uh, for the ho during the holidays. Okay, I would like to thank the board and everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great, uh, great night. Mm -hmm. Next. Sure. Next, we have another renewal. This is for a restaurant wine license. Um, the applicant is Cafe Booney on Booney Broadway, doing incorporated, doing business as Booney Cafe Coffee, located at 4961 Broadway between West 207th Street and Isham Streets. Do we have a representative? Yes. We're here. Wonderful. Nice yeah, to see you again. Hi. For the purpose of the minister, please tell us your names. Sarina Prabasi, that's S-A-R-I-N-A, P-R-A-B-A-S-I, Prabasi. And uh, Elias Gurmo, that's E-L-I-A-S, and uh, G-U-R-M-U. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming back. And I must say that um, before I turn over to uh, the 34th precinct, uh, that you, ha you have been a great operator, so much so that, you know, uh, the general board meeting last night, I mean, uh, last month, uh, the board requested that this, uh, that they would not take any negative action against you. And they tabled uh, your resolution, which is very unusual, uh, which meant that uh, the board would not have any, like, any resolution uh, in a negative way. And for that, and because of your uh, commitment to be a great operator, uh, there was no action taken in a negative way, shape, or form. So I'm glad that you're back. I know you have been a great establishment, but we must go through the process of asking the 34th precinct for the input. All the same. Thank you. In regards to this establishment, I have nothing to report. No 311 complaints and no 911 calls. Thank you so much. Do we have an input from our residents? Um, yes. Uh, Sally Fisher. Hi, I am speaking as an Inwood resident, also as um, co-founder of Friends of Inwood Hill Park and a founding member of the Washington Heights Inwood Food Council. Um, Booney has been amazing ever since they arrived. They opened up Inwood's first performing arts space um, shortly after opening, then the pandemic came and they immediately switched operations to bringing food and um, substance to our community. Um, they have been an amazing partner. Um, they have worked with us specifically on bringing festivals um, to the community, both with our Mulch Fest, with our Earth Day Festival. I can't recommend them highly enough. They have been an amazing partner. Um, we love having them. And if you have any questions about how committed they are to the community, you probably should have no questions. But if you do, I'm happy to answer them. But we are thrilled to have them in our community. They have been um, even better than I had hoped for when they announced their location. So I recommend them um, with no reservations. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sally. And now we're going to the minutes because uh, we always like to hear comments from our residents about a particular operator. And uh, Boone Cafe have been just outstanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very proud of the work that you have done here. Thank you. May, may we have a, an opportunity? Just I want to clarify. I know that we were not at the last licensing committee meeting, and that was completely um, a miscommunication. We were not aware. And something happened that shouldn't have happened, but we, we, were, we were not aware that we were supposed to be there. And uh, so I just want to make sure that the committee knows that you have our uh, respect and we would, if we had known we would be there and this time we know and we're here and we're ready to answer any questions. God bless. Uh, community you. members, uh, do we have any questions? 
don't have any questions. I just want to speak in favor of the applicant. I was there recently for an event. Um, the food is wonderful. The atmosphere is great. So fantastic, fantastic job is what I'd like to say. Really happy. Well, at this point, uh, there's nothing more to say uh, rather than to go to straight vote if then opposition. And you, please. Sure. Isidro? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Leo? Uh, come back to Leo, please. Sure. Robin? Robin, you hear me? Yes. yes. So Robin was a yes. Leo? So Robin was a yes. Leo? Yes. There's a weird echo Hello? happening. There's a weird <laughs> echo. We, we, we hear you, Leo. You were a yes. Yes. So there, there, you may oh, yeah. check, check your audio because there's some weird echo happening. OK, I got you. OK. Thank you. Um, uh, Chair, that's a vote of five zero zero um, unanimous. Yeah. Thank you so much, Angel. Very helpful. And um, to all committee members, please uh, keep an eye to make sure that we recognize whenever we have a new uh, committee member. And um, if we lose one committee member, we will not have quorum. So please, uh, for those of you that are here, please uh, pay attention on the voting process. Uh, so I hope that, you know, either uh, Cindy will join us, Ashley, and um, who's the sure, I believe I believe Mariel said that Mariel. she was going to be joining us late because of um, a, a, a scheduling conflict. So hopefully we'll have her on soon. Excellent. Uh, so, Leo, for the purpose of the minutes, uh, we are not entertaining agenda item number three because it has been withdrawn. So we'll move to the next one. Okay. So then moving over to agenda num item number four, um, this is for the renewal of a restaurant wine license. Um, we're looking at Tampopo LLC doing business as Tampopo Ramen at 1-15 Bennett Avenue at the corner of Bennett Avenue. Do we have a representative? Um, so they provided us with a copy of the questionnaire a copy of uh, the floor plan and um, this is a very small establishment on 181st and Bennett. I'm surprised it's not here, Josh, who is the owner. Very surprised it's not here. Um, but we'll proceed with the 34. Officer Ain. Officer Aim, uh, in regards to this location, just like the others, no 311 complaints, no 911 calls, no issues with this location. Thank you so much, Officer Aim. Um, Andrew, please uh, refresh my memory because I'm overwhelmed. Sure. Um, so we don't, we do have a complete questionnaire. Mm -hmm. uh, what was, what's the role of the committee if no one shows up, even though there's no problem with it? 34. So I think in the past, when we've done renewals, um, even if there's no representative, as long as there's no issues from the police precinct or the community, I think we've we've voted um, if we don't hear any issues, if it's a renewal. Very well. So do I have any uh, comments from residents? Seeing none, uh, let's uh, go back into committee session now. Um, Committee members, any comments? Seeing none, I recommend I go to straight vote. Ms. Hidro, how do you vote? I can't vote uh, because of conflict. Uh, this uh, particular operator is within the bid, okay. and I'm the executive director of the bid, so there's a conflict there. I cannot vote. Sure. Um, I vote yes. Um, Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. The so, chair, you have a vote of 401 um, in the affirmative. I uh, think Mar Ali just joined as well, Angel. Okay, so now we have Marielle. Marielle, were you here for the discussion to participate in the vote, or should we just wait for you to participate moving forward? Thanks so much. I, I just joined, so I, I missed the discussion. I'll have to join. I'll have to vote for the ones moving forward. Thank you. Sure. So, so Angel, uh, the vote again is uh, four zero. 
four zero, yeah. Uh, zero one, right? Yes, four zero one. No, four zero because I didn't abstain. I cannot vote. Oh, you yes, yeah, you're not voting. Yes, so it's so four it's zero. Uh, four zero zero uh, one cannot vote. So this application passes very well. Next one, please. Um, we are going to move over now to um, livery car base uh, license renewals. Um, looking at Broad Dykeman Car Service Incorporated, located at 203 Dykeman Street between Vermilia Avenue and Broadway. Thank you so much, Andrew. And before I move on, before I move on, Andrew, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a question in the chat about uh, the prospective residents uh, having uh, jurisdiction over the opening of uh, establishment for new years. Uh, we're going to discuss that matter, but uh, for the question brought up by Sheriff Miller, Miller, this is something new from the SLA. Sorry, someone has a weird echo. Can you please all mute yourselves? Uh, so Cheryl, the fact that uh, usually the prison would have jurisdiction over this, and they still do, the SLA just requires uh, now that we have an input into it. Uh, and this is something new. We're going to detain it and see how it goes. All right. But please uh, reserve your questions uh, once we approach that part of the agenda. Uh, so we have uh, agenda item number five. Do we have any representative from board? Yes, yes, yes. My name is Kemi. My name is Kemi. Familia. Yeah, but your echo is pretty bad, sir. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I, don't know. I think you're on two devices. We see you twice. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Please, please uh, disconnect one of your devices. That is producing the echo. Thank you, Samari. Try now. Can you hear me now? You still have the same echo. Well, maybe I, we recommend that you log off, you come back on and do just a call instead of the video. Maybe you, you just call in. I think we have another representative. Uh, well, I, I log off and then I come back. Okay. Or just try calling. Okay. Good evening. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Uh, my name is Bruno Janeo. I'm the president of Protect and Carter. I'm sorry, what's your name again, sir? Bruno Janeo. B R U N O G E N A O. And uh, what's uh, your connection to this? Uh, Delivery base. Are you the owner, representative? I'm the president. Angel, did you get the, the last name uh, for this? Uh... And now, yeah. Okay, Samaria, okay. Very well. Uh, so the ask here is to um, this is a uh, a delivery base which requires the approval of the community board. Uh, the idea is uh, you know, for community members if they have any questions about the number of cars that I have in service, uh, if they have cars that can provide a service to a uh, disabled uh, clientele, and uh, any other questions that you might have, and they will proceed to a vote. Um, how many cars do you have, um, Mr. Bruno? At the moment, we have uh, 55 vehicles. 65? Yes. And uh, do you have any uh, units that are accessible? Yes, we do. How many? We have three, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. All right, and how long have you been in business? 35 years. Wow, that's a lot. Yes. All right, very well. Uh, Before you, uh, we move to uh, the precinct, uh, anything that you got to tell us, are you going to share with us? Mr. Bruno? Uh, no, there is a family-owned business. We've been in the community for 35 years. And uh, the, the co-founder 
of a company that passed away and and we can do it because we have to at the school. Oh, sorry to hear that, Mr. Hanau. At this point, I'd like to turn uh, to the 34th prison to see if they have any comments. 34th uh, of Sain. In regards to this location, uh, the 34 has no objection, uh, no complaints, no 911 calls. Thank you so much, uh, Officer Ain. Uh, any residents? Seeing none, committee members, any issues? Seeing none, I recommend I go to a straight forward. If there are no objections, Angel. Sure. Um, Isidro? Yes. Um, I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. And Mariel? Yes. Um, that is a vote of 600 in the affirmative. Thank you so much. Have a happy holidays, uh, Mr. Janao. This license. Oh, thank uh, this you. Happy holidays, thank you. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you so much. Uh, Angel, please proceed. Sure. Um, we're now going to move over into corporate changes to licenses. Um, we have one applicant, and that's Dos Mares Seafood and Lounge Corp, um, located at 25 Sherman Avenue at the corner of Sickle Street. Do we have a representative? Doesn't seem like we have a representative. Change. Do we have a representative for agenda item number six? Dos Maris. Seeing none, I recommend that we go to straight vote if there's no opposition from other committee. Seeing none, Angel, please. Isidro? No. Uh, I vote no. Simari? No. Leo? No. Robin. Robin. I'll come back to Robin. Marielle. No. Okay. Robin, are you still with us? Yes. No. Okay. Uh, Chair, that is a zero six zero vote in the negative. Thank you so much, Andrew. This application fails. Let's move to the next one, please. Okay. Um, the next batch of applicants are requesting a method of operation operations change to their licenses. The first one is Angry Burger Corp doing business as La Cantina Heights, located at 4460 Broadway at the corner of Fairview Avenue. Do we have a representative? Yes, good evening, uh, committee. This is Miguel Acosta uh, representing Angry Burger doing business as La Cantina Heights. Welcome on board, uh, Miguel. And uh, for the committee info and the rest of the members, uh, this operator did post a public sign and di they did submit a uh, complete questionnaire. Uh, since uh, this is a uh, to change uh, the method of operation, uh, Miguel, can you please um, share with us what is that uh, the changes that you are proposing for La Cantina? Uh, yes, uh, we previously met with the board, I think, last year. Uh, the time expired for the allowable time frame by the Liquor Authority. We're looking to add a DJ uh, to the uh, application and a uh, security guard as well to the application and the license and also live music, uh, mariachi bands and things like that. Uh, the owner was previously approved. I don't know if Mr. Tejada is on board in licensing meeting at the moment. I am. Uh, yes. So, uh, Angel, if he, you would like to elaborate a little bit more with uh, your experience and the time you've been doing business. My name is Angel Tejada. I've been the owner of La Cantina Heights for approximately uh, since 2012. Uh, I've been there all these years. Um, the reason why we want to add, um, we going for the whole package. We also want to ask security guard because things are a little bit um, out of control in the streets. And uh, I guess adding a security guard, we bring uh, bring us more uh, sense of uh, stability, if you want to call it. You know, things are very wild out there. So we're taking this opportunity, which is going for the whole package, the security guard, the uh, DJ, the live music. When we say live music, we are referring maybe once a week 
uh, live mariachi band, maybe for a birthday or any kind of event of that sort of? Uh, very well. So to the two of you, you're submitting in writing that you would like to add DJ, karaoke, and acoustic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And also security personnel. Correct. Okay. Um, if you if you recall, uh, I was before the community board uh, maybe uh, six weeks no. ago when uh, my license was renewed and the uh, and in the license we put security card, we put DJ, and we put uh, we checked off all of that. All right. Uh, so that is the ask. Yes. I would like now to hear from uh, the thirty four percent of the aim. In regards to this location, uh, we just have uh, this one three one one complaint for noise um, this year. Uh, other than that, no nine one one calls. Uh, also, the bus stop sometimes get uh, congested. A lot of people park in the bus stop. So, if there's anything the business can do to help us out, we would appreciate it. This Thank you so reason. much. This is the reason why we're adding a security guard. Um, maybe we could tell people not to park there, but let me let me make emphasis that there's four four establishment, uh, including a cigar bar that is in front of us that allows BYOB, and then we have Locksmith, uh, which is the biggest one in the block, if you want to call it a Locksmith, and then the bus stop becomes pretty much the only space available and with everybody that go into those spaces park. Sometimes I have approached customers and tell them, hey, please, can you not park there? And the response is, you don't own the streets. You know, unfortunately, I just don't want to get into any kind of confrontation with anybody because it seems to be that everybody nowadays is some, some kind of animosity. So I just leave it alone. If you, if you drive by, you see uh, a, cars, a cars park in the bus stop and this pretty much... Not much we could do unless the customer is going to our establishment. We don't allow the customers uh, to to double park or to uh, park at the bus stop. But I can't control people parking there going to all the establishment. Like I said, we have Wahis Pizza. We have in front of us a cigar bar. Then we have a, um, a locksmith, which is the biggest one in the strip. Then we have Buddha Beer Bar. And then we have a liquor store, which is down the block where people park and go inside to buy the liquor. So it's a little bit complicated to control that. But we'll do whatever we can. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we're, we're not saying you're, you're the issue. We're not saying you're the problem. We're just saying if there's anything you could do to help us out, we would appreciate it. Oh, oh yes, 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 definitely. I, we, like I said, we sometimes we approach customers and we tell them not, not to park there. But unless they're coming into my establishment, I, I can, you know, pretty much enforce anything. It's a little bit complicated. You know, some people are very confrontational. And it's difficult. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Angel. Sure. Uh, do I have any uh, comments from uh, our residents? Yeah, no, um, you know, we don't we don't want you to get into confrontations with, you know, your patrons or people from other establishments. We're just letting you know, you know, if you can help us out with anything. Obviously, that's that's under our control. So we will be enforcing that. Thank you. We uh, we will take that into consideration. We uh, maybe we could come up with a game plan. And uh, I don't know if putting cones. Do you know if putting cones that would help? If I could put cones in front of the bus stop, I, would that help or no? Uh, I, I think that that's not uh, legal. Yeah. So, uh, but at this point, I'd like to uh, recognize Maria that has a question, Maria. Yes, thank you, Isidro. Um, just wanted to say, firstly, thank you for uh, posting the public notice. Um, we appreciate when establishments do that. Um, I guess just a question about the uh, the change uh, for the DJ and the the live music. Are you kind of? I know you said maybe once a week for the live music. Um, have you established what day that is? And then for the DJ, what are the hours that you're um, intending to have the DJ uh, play or, you know, kind of be on. The reason I asked is because I just recently moved um, not too far from uh, La Cantina Heights. So I will know, <laughs> but I also hope to visit. 
um, in the near future. <laughs> well, in, regards, in, in, regards, in regards to the DJ and the live music, it's something that we want to have as an option in our license because let's say New Year Eve is coming. We want to have a party. Uh, you have a birthday. You come to us and you want to have a birthday. You want to have a DJ. You want our mariachis to come in and sing. So we're going to have, we want to have all these options available to us and not being limited, you know, just to not having it and then doing it and getting into trouble. Okay, so I guess then my follow up question is so that it's kind of more so if, you know, maybe there's like a birthday party and they contact the establishment ahead of time and say, hey, we were, you know, going to reserve a few tables, we would like to have a, you know, a DJ or something right. or like you said, a kind of special moments, but not like every day of the week or anything like that, correct? No, I don't know if you have walked by establishment. Uh, we mm-hmm. open seven days a week and uh, pretty much by one thirty, two o'clock, we're closed most of the time. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Maria. At this point, I'm going to uh, propose uh, two sets of stipulations to uh, make sure that we cover some of the concerns from the 34th precinct, uh, because that area is really uh, prohibitive when it comes uh, for traffic moving, you know, in either north or south uh, directions. Uh, so, uh, Angel, I'm going to request that you. Uh, build up a no double parking sign uh, which is like a stack that stands like a triangle and you build two of them and put it like uh, on each side of your building the very end and the beginning of your of your establishment on the sidewalk um, and for the rest of the businesses there is something that we're going to uh, request to make sure that in case of an emergency that traffic will not impede uh, the movement of you know the emergency vehicles let, so, me, let me repeat that. Repeat that. You said you want a stand with a sign that says no, no parking. No double parking. I have, uh, I have something that's in shape of a triangle. It's about uh, four feet tall. So uh, you have that. You have it in place. I, I have one. I haven't, I haven't taken, I haven't taken it out. You know, but I have one. I just got to change the sign on it. It's, it's something that I use for the happy hours sometimes that I put that. So, sign. so yeah. Just if you can have, uh, get another one, that would be great. Sure. And then uh, we would like to have a uh, phone number or someone that is in charge in case uh, there are issues that uh, residents will have someone to reach out to. And also the patrons. I'll put the good neighbor sign and I'll put my number on it for the manager for any concern. Yeah, that'll be, that'll that'll help. Uh, And and on that note, if uh, no other community members will have any questions or concerns, I think that we can go to a vote. Angel, please. Yes. Isidro, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. And that is a vote of 600 in the affirmative chair. Thank you so much, Angel. Um, I just uh, like to check to see if there are any other new uh, committee members that just join us. I see none. Oh, let's proceed. Uh, with the next one, please. Great. Um, so the next is also a method of operations change. Um, we are the applicant is DNC Restaurant Bar and Grill Corp, doing business as La Esquina de Nagua Restaurant, located at 2244 Amsterdam Avenue at the corner of West 172nd Street. Um, is the applicant does the applicant have a representative here? Uh, Miguel Acosta again, representing DNC Restaurant on behalf of Mr. Carlos Duarte. And Carlos Duarte is the owner? Uh, Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, Miguel, this particular applicant did not submit a complete questionnaire. Uh, I was just retained today to represent them. Uh, uh, According to the licensee, submitted everything on Friday. Uh, No. Uh, I got this uh, documents today. Uh, Chanel, are you on the line? Uh, and I don't have a copy of the questionnaire. Also, Miguel, while you're there, please uh, ask them why they received uh, a B on the last health inspection. And also check with them, since you only re- uh, retained today, uh, that they have been rejected consistently by this community board and this license committee uh, for the lack of uh, attendance 
they have been rejected at least three times that I remember and it's a little bit uh, concerning that they never ever show up and they only retain you today and they're expecting you to know all the specifics about this establishment is troubling um, I see that uh, Maria is this like a same hand or new hand uh, a new hand um, please please proceed uh, you have a floor Thank you, Isidro. Just really quickly, also, they, they didn't post the public notice. I didn't see a picture either. So um, also something for you, uh, Miguel, to take back to the licensee. Uh, so, Miguel, these are very serious uh, items that uh, should be taken into account. Uh, I highly recommend that uh, you have a chat with them. Do, do you Did you receive, uh, for example, pictures? Because uh, I received... Uh, in an email with the pictures of the sign posting. I received a full questionnaire. I received a, I received a, the beer license that's required. Uh, so I, I'm not sure exactly uh, what was it that you received because I received in, in my email a completed package. Uh, yeah. With, with a floor plan, the liquor license and pictures, even a, uh, recommendation letter from uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, so you don't have these in your files, what you're saying? No, I don't. Okay. All right. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to uh, the licensee, uh, try to organize the situation and uh, uh, basically would like to withdraw this application then. Uh, and, and, and before you do that, Miguel, before you do that, uh, yeah. Because again, we're here to assist our operators. And I understand. But at the same time, we also have, we have to be responsible. And on that note, um, I'd like to get uh, the opinion of the 33rd precinct uh, to see if there are any other items that have to be addressed so that you have a complete understanding as to what is going on. So at this point, I would like to uh, recognize Lieutenant uh, Jerez to please uh, give us the feedback if you have any on this agenda item, which is number eight. For this establishment, we have a total of 18 311 jobs, all for loud music. We also have a 61 that was taken for a patron who parked his car outside, went into the bar. When he came out, his car was stolen. He left it running outside the establishment. Very well. So none of that will be uh, in the minutes because this application, uh, of course, will be withdrawn. But Miguel, these are items that, again, these items have to be addressed. I will notify the licensee as soon as I finish up tonight. Very well. So for the purpose of the minutes, uh, this uh, application has been withdrawn and um, no action will be taken against this particular establishment. Uh, so Angel, I guess we can proceed to the next one. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Good, good evening, members of the community board. My name is Fernando Gonzalez, and I've been on the call for 50 minutes. And my agenda, Dos Mares Seafood Lounge, was called. And um, I didn't know the procedure because I'm new to this. To unmute it was star six. And I, when it was called, it was immediately voted. I didn't get a chance to, to call Paniagua or anything. It was just basically like one second and boom. And I feel like, you know, at least I'm being told that now I have to wait like um, another month to get this done. And I would like to request, you know, to be considered, maybe not today, but in the future, when someone doesn't show like for a minute, let's just, just push the agenda to like five, 10 minutes as a courtesy, because I've been here, you know, I don't think uh, I stepped out of the business and been here for an hour. I've been part of the community for over 20 years, and you know, I just don't, didn't think that that could be possible. You know, like I, you know, so like we, I don't know why would they vote on why would they vote on something like literally uh, a minute after it was called? You know. So, uh, as a general practice, uh, your point is well taken. We do have an agenda that uh, we have to follow. And when we have a long agenda, we have to move. It's my job to push it forward. I know that with this uh, new uh, system,
that is electronically, we are bound to have issues. That's one of them. However, because we already took the vote, uh, there's nothing that we can do to reverse that and go back. Uh, I will see how we can manage and improve this, uh, this problem because it is, it is a problem. I understand that you know it's not fair, and I don't know. I, I will have to check with committee members to see how we can improve this on this. Uh, I mean, it's very. It's, it's it seems like I I run a business like anything else. You know, like if we're gonna call an agenda, even though it's thirty or forty, I mean, we we push things as as they get in. So if I was number six. And and I didn't get it because of the technical issues. There was a guy that I had to turn off the. There was a, a sound there that was very loud, and uh, I had to change my headphones and everything. And you know they, you know, he got like two or three minutes, but I didn't even get a minute. I was technically, you know, it was called and it was boarded like in fifty-two seconds. But and again, and I don't find we called. Uh... Angel called the, the agenda item. I also asked if there was anyone present. No one answered. And we, again, we have to push the agenda forward. I understand what you're saying, but uh, in, that, in that sense, uh, we really had to push the agenda forward. You, the agenda item that is in question is agenda item number six, right? Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, I think that I would have had no problems with this, and I'm sure the committee would not have any problems, but we have to be very uh, consistent and transparent uh, to make sure that we do things right. We cannot make exceptions, but we understand what the problem is. Uh, I guess I can delay uh, the call to see, give it like maybe one minute or two to see if uh, the applicant can come on board, but we've been consistent with this. Uh, I'll, be, I'll have that in mind whenever we have someone that is not uh, present. But uh, we're welcome for you to come back next uh, next month, and you should have no problem because based on what I saw in your application, you do have a complete application. And uh, please proceed to submit all the paperwork as required, and we'll see you next month. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. And you please proceed. Sure. Um, so the next bat the next applicant is seeking an alteration to the license. Um, this is 160 Dykeman Restaurant Corp doing business as Republica, located at 160 Dykeman Street at the corner of Sherman Avenue. Is there is there a representative? Present? Miguel Acosta once again. Good evening. Uh, representing the application for the alteration at 160 Restaurant doing business as Republica. And of course, the owner of the, the establishment is. Uh... Victor Sanchez. Victor Sanchez, right? Yes, correct. Okay. And uh, the ask here is uh, to relocate uh, the bar and the DJ booth. Is that correct? Is that from the lounge, right? That's from the lounge. Yeah. So basically, the second floor has a bar when you walk in on the right hand side. And he's basically just moving that to where the VIP section is now. So I sent you the current floor plan and a proposed new floor plan with the uh, bar relocation. Okay. Uh, I was there like uh, last week. So this is going to take place when? Uh, after like uh, June? I mean, uh, January? Yeah, after January. All right. Uh, beautiful establishment. Uh, great service. Anyway, uh, so the ask here is just to uh, move uh, the bar and the DJ uh, from one place to another. Uh, for committee members, uh, do understand that if the expenditure goes uh, beyond ten thousand dollars, it's required that you know they do submit uh, this to the community board, and that we vote on it. Um, now, uh, this is with the purview of thirty-four percent, Officer Aim. Officer Aim, um, in regards to this location, this summer we had a couple incidents that happened outside the establishment. Uh, you know, we understand that the establishment has no control what happens outside. Uh, we have an open communication with the owner and the establishment. They've assisted us with investigations and uh, video footage. Uh, we have no objection. Thank you. So, Officer Aim, uh, the owner has uh, uh, cooperated with you as far as like uh, video footage and all that? Yeah, yes, they have. So, they've shown you like uh, what's going on. And this happened outside of the establishment, right? Correct. And uh, these uh, two issues, uh, were they like patrons of the establishment or not really? 
Say that again. Uh, the the problems that was uh, that took place outside uh, were they pa were they patrons of the establishment or not really? Yes. They were patrons of the establishment. There was uh, target robberies. They were just victims of uh, robberies. Oh, okay. Wow. And uh, was the robbery for the establishment or the or pay to patrons that you know of? The uh, the patrons. There were robberies of the patrons. Wow. Okay. Yeah, the, these are the situations that were occurring during the summer, uh, which uh, in the last board meeting, I was informed and I informed the, the community that, you know, uh, these situations that were occurring uh, were actually out of the control, even from the precinct, uh, uh, pre-planned, you know, uh, these robbers were, were visiting these establishments as well and basically locating your patrons that, you know, were wearing jewelry. And sometimes these are situations that occur in a lot of neighborhoods that are out of our control. Wow, that's sad to hear. And I know it's happening like everywhere, but it's really sad. Uh, anyway, at uh, this point, I'd like to see if there are any comments from residents, uh, committee members. I know, I know for one that um, Victor runs a tight ship over there. <laughs> And, uh, yes, he does. And I know that uh, he tries to take care of uh, this establishment. He spent a lot of a great deal of uh, of capital to have a really nice place. I, I love the rooftop. Uh, now I gotta be careful. And again, not to his fault, but don't wear no jewelry. <laughs> don't wear no jewelry. You're right. <laughs> um, this is this is something. So. Yeah. Uh, any comments from committee members? Uh, uh, Chair, I just wanted to share that I remember this establishment came for renewal um, earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken, and that community yes, members, they came and spoke very highly in favor um, of the way that the establishment is, you know, operated um, and the, the way that they behave as a good neighbor in the neighborhood. I just wanted to say for the record that I remember that from community members. Yeah. I also recall them, uh, some committee members uh, and residents speaking on behalf of this establishment. Also, in your last uh, house inspection, you had an A. Uh, Miguel, that you know yes. of, um, did uh, Victor his staff uh, post a uh, public notice? Uh, yes, I sent the picture in. I took the picture myself. Okay. Any other yeah, committee that's... members? If not, I recommend they go to straight vote. Uh, say none, uh, Angel, please. Sure. Isidro? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Leo? I'll come back to Leo. Robin? I see Robin is still here. I'll come back to Robin. Mariel? Yes. Okay. Um, we need, uh, Leo, are you yes. with us? Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, and Robin. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so chair, that's a vote of six zero zero in the affirmative. Thank you so much, Angel. So this application passes. Um, um, so Miguel, and once again, you know, uh, our regards to, uh, big to his staff there and just please let him know to be very careful because this is, yeah. I uh, definitely will do. He's he's already taken measures, so uh, I think it shouldn't be a problem from here on in. All right. Thank you so much, Miguel. Uh, next one, please. Right. Um, the next batch of applicants are seeking a new license. Um, we'll start off with the on-premise liquor licenses. Um, the first applicant we have is the La Cantina Heights Eatery Group, doing business. Uh, sorry, not doing business, but located at forty-four sixty Broadway at the corner of Fairview Avenue. Do we have a- uh, Yes, yes, so Miguel Acosta here, I also have to, this is basically uh, the situation with this. We also met with the community board back in November. Mr. Tejada, who we just spoke to with regarding to his change of method of operation, is seeking uh, to sell this business and continue uh, operating the business with the new owner. Uh, the last time the deal fell through, 
Uh, the gentleman came back, is still interested in the business. We're seeking uh, community board approval in order for us at least uh, to have uh, this approval if the deal goes through for us to submit an application. Mr. Tejada has gone through financial hardships and is looking uh, to basically recapitalize himself by selling this business. So in the event that this application does get approved uh, for a change of ownership and the deal uh, does go through, then basically we're going to be submitting this application. Mr. Tejada is on the committee meeting now and he can elaborate a little bit more uh, with regards to this request. Miguel, but uh, I'm sorry, before you, we move on, uh, wouldn't this be a, a corporate change? No, because he's not buying the corporation. He's basically purchasing the assets. So we would be applying under a new corporation called La Cantina Heights Eatery Group. But it's going to be doing business the same way as La Cantina Heights DBA. So Wait. Angel An Angel's current company is called Angry Burger, doing business as La Cantina Heights. Right. Um, Mr. Sanchez's corporation is called La Cantina Heights Eatery Group, doing business as like So the same method of operation Angel has. Uh, Angel will be working side by side with him if he does uh, get to sell the business and the deal doesn't fall through. Uh, basically, just looking to recapitalize on a personal level. So, um, Angel is selling to who again? Uh, Carlos Sanchez. And uh, has Carlos uh, worked here before or not really? Carlos is a good friend of mine. He has his own restaurant in the past in the Dominican Republic, and he has worked here in the United States in a restaurant. Let me just, I, I think Miguel um, pretty much gave you an essence of what I'm trying to do. But this is what happened. Uh, so I was, I, I've been one of the misfortune person that didn't get the, uh, the first SBA loan. And I also didn't get the, uh, the grant, the RFF. And um, because of that, my business, well, I also got hit twice. My business flooded two times with the, both the hurricanes. So I got hit pretty hard. I, uh, I'm still holding on to the business, uh, hoping that the RFF comes back in. If that grant comes in, I will be able to salvage my business and keep my business. But as of now, I want to have that window open. I came in, we came in um, for this license last year and I didn't, I didn't, I, the deal didn't go through because uh, in the news they were saying that the RFF was coming in and that the money was going to be replenished. So I stayed with my business. So there's still hope that the, uh, this grant comes in and a lot of us are able to salvage our best, save our business. But if that money doesn't come in, it will be very, very extremely hard uh, to to hold on to the business. So this person is a way for me to salvage something and also stay on board with the business, operating the business with a, operate, um, with a management uh, operating agreement. And hopefully when I uh, get back on my feet, I'll be able to be part of the business again. Uh, so let me have a chat with uh, Miguel because I want to be clear mm -hmm. about the process mm -hmm. uh, because I was under the impression that if there was a... Uh, I purchased that this would have gone through a, uh, a corporate change. And since uh, both Angel and Simari will be writing the minutes and resolutions, uh, Miguel. Yes. So what will be the general standard uh, procedure? So for this type of, uh, because I never heard of this. Uh, I heard that, you know, if you buy corporate change, if you're selling corporate change. And no, then so, we'll, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So the way it works is as follows. Uh, if you're buying a corporation like the stocks, like uh, in some cases, uh, you just had those models coming up. So basically, those models already has a license and a corporation. So now the officers uh, are removed and bring in a new officer. That's because they decided to purchase the corporation because the corporation was in good standings and the purchaser decided to purchase the stocks. So that's one way to go about it. That's what they call the corporate office of change. When you're buying the assets, it's basically Mr. Tejada owns Angry Burger. He has assets under that corporation. I come and I form a new corporation and my corporation buy his assets. Now I have to apply for a new license. So basically the purchaser does not want to assume 
any responsibility of the previous owners of corporation. So he decides to incorporate a new entity and apply for a new license in which the state liquor authority then allows them to operate with a 90 day permit that is renewable every 30 days after the 90 days uh, until their permanent license gets approved. So the procedure is a little bit different because you're applying for a new license here, but you have to wait for the liquor authority to approve you what they call a 90 day permit in order for you to operate under the new corporation. So once the 90 day uh, period permit expires, then you go on a month. And, month basis. Yes, correct. Um, So let me check with both Angel and Simari before I check with the 34th precinct. Uh, so do you both understand uh, the process? Oh, and by the way, Angel, uh, it might be a better idea if you also introduce uh, the general board meeting. Uh, but we can have that conversation offline if you want. Okay. okay. Um, so the idea here is to uh, apply for a 90-day period permit. Then after which, if you don't get your license by that time under the new... Um, corporation, then you still go month to month, correct? Correct. Uh, Angel and Sismari, particularly the two of you, do you have any questions to understand like the process? Yes. Um, so ultimately what will happen with the, so the physical space obviously doesn't move. Oh, um, if Angel is able to sell his, sell it off to La Cantina Heights Eatery Group, basically Angel's looking to dissolve angry burger court for all intents and purposes correct and this new person coming in um as la cantina heights eater group becomes the entity that owns the physical location correct the assets okay because um, we're getting on the grant and if we don't get this grant angry burger corp is under a lot of hot water a lot of debt backup brand uh connect is on debt all kind of debt that you can think of so this is why the new person is just better off getting a new corporation and being fresh to solve in the corporation. And you ap apply for that grant uh, that was just released uh, today by SBS. I will. I, I've been applying to every grant I, you could think of, but just it's just the funds are not enough for all of us. Okay, yeah. very well. And uh, what is the experience that uh, Carlos Sanchez has as far as like uh, dealing with alcohol? Uh, Carlos Sanchez has had a restaurant in the Dominican Republic for three years, and also he worked here as a manager. Where did he work as a manager? In the Bronx, in a, in a small place in the Bronx, is called, I believe, it's La Finca. La Finca? Yeah, I think so. For how long he has been there? He only interned there for a short period of time. Okay, uh, so, you know, the experience for whoever is uh, getting to this establishment, uh, you know, we love to have uh, people come in from different parts, but New York State has very strict regulation on alcohol handling. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Miguel, I hope that you uh, let uh, Mr. Sanchez know about the particular regulations and, how, and how he should uh, hire someone to uh, bartend uh, with the particular um, certifications and trainings. So this is where I come in, staying in as a manager, so active uh, manager in the establishment. Okay, so you, then you become like an active manager. Yes, that's, that's the whole deal, yes. In writing, I become the manager, yes. Okay. Okay. That, that, that kind of, you know, smooth things out. Um, all right. So now we turn to uh, the 34 precinct of AIM. This is within the period 34 precinct. Officer AIM 34. Uh, basically, what I stated before, just 1311 throughout the year. And uh, just the issue with the bus stop. That's it. Thank you. All right. So. With uh, the new management, uh, Angel, uh, we'll make sure that, you know, there are two stands for the do not parking sign, and um, everything should be taken care of. Uh, let me see. The management stay the same because I will be the manager on board. Right. Yeah. Uh, so let me see if there are no questions from our residents, seeing none. Uh, committee members, do we have any questions? Seeing none, I recommend that we go to a vote. Angel, please. Right. Isidro? Yes. I go yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. Uh, chair, that's a six zero zero vote in the affirmative. Very well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Angel. And uh, thank you. 
I <laughs> hope, uh, Angel, that you do succeed in uh, whatever is convenient for you. If you do get the grants, uh, stay as the owner because it's a really nice establishment. But uh, if things don't improve, then, you know, go, do what you got to do, all right? Is it, this is only option B. If we get the grant, uh, this, I'm not going nowhere. Very well. Congratulations. Uh, I hope you uh, will move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Angel, please proceed. Sure. The next one is also um, the, the next applicant is also seeking a new license for an on premise liquor license. Um, it's CND Food Services Inc. doing business as Shaking Crab, located at 4740 Broadway at the corner of Thayer Street. Do we have a representative present? Uh, yes. For the purpose of the minister, please tell us your name and affiliation to this establishment. Okay. Uh, good evening, mem uh, board members. My name is uh, Jen Du from Michael Floyd, Inc. And uh, the president, Lucy Chang, she cannot make it tonight. So I'm here to represent the applicant, CND Food Services, Inc. Uh, do business as Shaking Crab, seeking an on-premises liquor license. Uh, uh, shaking, thank you. Thank yeah, you so shaking, much. Before, before you proceed, uh, let me just state uh, that the community board has specific requirements for new applicants. Uh, besides submitting a completed uh, questionnaire, we also need to have a copy of the floor plan and a copy of the menu. Uh, you do not have a copy of uh, the floor plan nor a copy of the menu. Those are required. I did, I did submit it, yes, I did submit it to, um, uh, what is her name? She sent me the email, she confirmed everything. Yes, and I, it's uh, in the packet. It's not in so the I'm packet. I'm sorry? Oh, yes, oh, yes, I, name, yes. And you I'll, said it's okay, you said you'd be able to open the, uh, just, just give the me menu. One second. Just give me one second. Oh, yeah, let, me we'll have a, let me have a <laughs> chat uh, with Chanel. Chanel, I have uh, this application here, number 11. And, yeah, uh, the shaking crab it should be in there. If it's not, if it's not like with the, perhaps check oh, in the okay. back. I see, I see, I see. I'm sorry. It's okay, a separate great. attachment in the email. It's, it's a separate attachment. Yeah. Okay. okay I got great. It. Uh, apologies, Chanel, and apology, uh, Miss uh, Jen Dean. Du. Call me Jenny. Yes. Jenny, apologies. Yes. So, committee okay. members, just give yeah. me one minute, please. Committee members, we do have a copy of the menu. I see it here, a lot of crabs here, uh, okay, lobsters, drinks, uh, the floor plan is here, I got to check to see the capacity because it seems like a very small place, but we're going to go to that later. Just give me one second, Ms. Chandu. Sure. Um, so for the purpose of uh, the minutes and also for the attention of 30, 34 reason. Officer AIM, I'm going to review uh, some of the specifics uh, for this applicant uh, so you can have an idea of what's coming on uh, around 207. I think it's around 207. I saw the establishment open. Is it 207 or Dykeman? Near Dykeman. It's near Dykeman. It's on, on the, yes. So the capacity, uh, Officer AIM, is uh, 73. The be... maximum, but right now they, they only have um, 12 tables, 48 seats. Let, let me go to have... Mr. Chandu, oh, sorry. Me, please do not interrupt. I'm uh, sorry. You have an opportunity. So the capacity is uh, 73. Uh, they will have uh, 12 uh, tables and doesn't say how many chairs. There will be no bar stools, 15 bar stools, I'm sorry. And... Um, the hours of operation is uh, 11 a.m. from Mondays uh, through Saturdays and then Sunday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. So again, Mondays uh, through Saturdays on 11 a.m. to uh, 2 a.m. and then uh, on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, the method of operation includes uh, no DJ, no, ju no jukebox, no karaoke, no live music. Uh, apparently the place hasn't been properly sound. Uh, there's no need for sound limiter to be installed, but the place has been properly soundproofed. Um, 
Now, at this point, uh, Ms. Jendu, I would like for you now to share your comments uh, with the committee. Please tell us okay. what is that you bring to the community, why should we uh, approve this license, and how you can contribute to the community. Okay, uh, like you already uh, know that they have a 12 table, each table they have about four seats. And uh, they are going to serve the community with a very unique franchising, uh, New, e New England Cajun style shellfish, which I think is only one um, established around the neighborhood. So um, they're going to have the, uh, the franchise headquarter company to come over to manage them, to train them to, to manage this business. And, um, and the, the, the president, Lucy Young, she's going to be there seven days a week and she will hire the manager and to make sure maintain this business. And they have a no DJ and they only play the soft um, background music and they are not accepting any services for any promoter, no auto services. Very well. Uh, Officer Ain, this is with the purview of 34 prison. What is the opinion of 34 prison? Uh, you, you said the uh, the establishment has been soundproofed. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. they right now they're doing the construction. They will do the sound approval. Okay, and you're going to be occupying the uh, the space of is it the deli? The uh, they used to be there, the deli. Uh, the... Before, yeah, before was deli, and it's a middle unit. Yeah. Okay, I, I see. Okay. Uh, the only thing with the three four is just be aware that you have residential units above your establishment. Just be aware of that and uh, and consider it that there's people you know above you. Uh, but other than that, that's the only uh, remark we have to make at this time. Uh, thank you so much, Officer Aim. Um, do we have any residents uh, that might have any issues, concerns, questions? Seeing none, uh, committee members. I have just one quick question and it's clarifying. Um, in terms of closing time, what, what was the closing time, Chair? It's uh, Mondays uh, through Saturdays from 11 a.m. Uh, to 2 a.m. And then on Sundays from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, thank you. I have a question, Isidro. Leo, please. Jenny, Ms. Jenny, are you gonna be hiring any uh, patrons from the neighborhood to work at your establishment? They will hide. Uh, um, they will hide the manager, but uh, they they will hide probably. I would say like uh, five to seven employees. So your question, uh, whether they're gonna hide the local? Yes, because, local. Yes, I will talk to. I will pass this information to president, and uh, I, I think that there's very possibility they will hide the local to help the, you know, recover everything to, you know, for this neighbor, for this neighbor and the community. Uh, Ms. Chandu, it's not a requirement that you hire local, but, you know, this community has the highest unemployment rate uh, citywide, and we will welcome uh, new operators to hire locally. It's critical that you do that. Uh, of course, you will make the final decision, but, you know, uh, it's something that uh, we hope that new operators would uh, take that into account. Uh, I also, definitely... Mm -hmm. I do have a question. Uh, you were applying for a full legal license. And uh, what has been your experience in dealing with alcohol handling? Like, uh, as I mentioned before, the headquarters, they're going to, you know, this is a franchise business. And they will, they have a full training and, uh, you know, to, to, to training all the employee and the owner to make sure everything, because they have a very, very good you know, rating for this business. The headquarters from Boston. So they have a whole system to training everything. And I, I'm sure that you probably did some research, uh, some studies. Uh, how well do you know this area and why are you coming to this area? Um, that I, I have to ask the, uh, the, the, the present, the, uh, you know, uh, because they've been searching for a while. And uh, of course, they've seen um, there's many um, is eating establishments being been closed down. And, um, and uh, they think if they open a business here, it probably can help uh, the community to get more business. I thought you already opened. No, right now the, uh, it's under construction. 
it's not open yet. Okay, uh, I see that uh, Maria has uh, her hand up. Uh, Maria, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Isidra. I was going to ask the question about the uh, the handling of the uh, uh, liquor license. Um, so thank you for asking. But I will say, I just took a look at uh, Shaking Crab and just online, I see that there are other um, establishments throughout the city. Um, I will say that uh, I am looking forward to uh, seafood, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to having a new establishment in the neighborhood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Yandu. Uh, Thank you. Any other questions from the committee members? Uh, seeing none, I do have uh, some steps that I'd like to recommend uh, for committee to uh, entertain. Uh, Ms. Yandu, so we, I would like to request that uh, you put a good neighbor sign. And that good neighbor sign can be easily attained by communicating with Chanel from the staff uh, office. Can you repeat uh, your question again? Sorry. So please uh, reach out to Chanel and ask her to send you the good neighbor sign. Okay. Uh, she will send that over via email, and that has to be displayed outside the establishment. I uh, also. You mean, you mean the notice? You mean the notice? No, it's not a notice. It's a sign that we have uh, from the community board that should be posted, uh, visible, so that the patients will know that they should keep themselves like uh, far away from the establishment and not to make any noise, to be good neighbors. Okay, all right. And I'm also going to request that you provide a phone number of a manager in charge in case uh, patrons or residents will have any problems that they can easily call someone to uh, rectify the problem right there and then. Sure, no problem. And I'm also going to ask that you also uh, put a sign of no double parking because that area is extremely congested. And I'm sure the person will appreciate if uh, we try to do something, in, you know, in preventing that problem because that area is extremely congested. So if you can please uh, post uh, a sign on the sidewalk that will say no double parking. Okay. Those are my uh, recommended stipulations. Uh, if any committee members will have any, if not, I recommend that we go to straight vote. Angel, please. Sure. Isidro. Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. Uh, Chair, it, the vote is 600 in the affirmative. Congratulations, Ms. Jendu. Uh, we welcome you to the community. Happy holidays to you. And uh, we, we hope that you prosper in your new establishment. Thank you so much. Everybody come over, enjoy the seafood. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next one, please. Sure. So our next applicant is also seeking a new on-premise liquor license. This is 420 Food Group Corp, located at 420 West 203rd Street between 9th and 10th Avenues. And so we have a representative. Acosta. Yes. Good evening. Uh, Miguel Acosta again here for 420 Food Group Corp. Uh, I have Mr. John Moya, who's the president and owner of this establishment. He's on uh, the meeting at the moment. Uh, this applicant is seeking a full on-premise liquor license for this location. Uh, this location was previously licensed uh, over three years ago. And uh, uh, John, as the meeting that we had, he was able to get a, a great deal with the landlord. And uh, it's looking and seeking uh, to bring in this new American seafood uh, style restaurant uh, into that neighborhood. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Miguel. And I'm trying to see uh, which uh, former place was there. Can you? This was uh, the location Baca, right next to Cocina Taller. Oh, really? Yeah, this location has been uh, closed for like three years, I think. Oh, wow. I'm glad that something's getting done here. Yeah. Uh, so bas basically, uh, there's a new building owner. The building owner uh, gave Mr. Moya an opportunity. Mr. Moya has been working with a lot of establishments in the community, uh, consulting, and uh, he also does uh, lighting uh, uh, to some establishments and basically has a pretty much uh, experience on how these large establishments work. Uh, the, the new owner, Paul, uh, as you know, he's uh, owner of the majority of these buildings in, in 10th Avenue. Uh, he's given John this opportunity by allowing him to keep and use all the equipment and all the stuff that was in the premise. I thought that Paul was the owner originally. 
No, Paul was not the owner. He purchased the building. Uh, then, like he purchased uh, the other lot on the other side, uh, where the other location to the. Uh, he also purchased where Umbrella used to be. And uh, yeah, basically. I know. Yeah, I know that Umbrella. It's uh, also is going to be turned into a school, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, very well. So on this applicant, we do have a complete questionnaire. They did send proof of a. Uh, posting the public notice. There is a copy of the floor plan, and there's also a copy of the menu. Uh, this is for the purview of the 34th precinct. And uh, Officer Aim, uh, this is where VACA used to be at. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, that area. Yes, we're familiar with that area. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, will promoters uh, be used at this location? No, it's no. It's going to be a family. Hi. Uh, well, I'm sorry. My name is John Moya. And uh, nice to meet you all tonight. And the whole idea is to have a family oriented restaurant uh, bringing seafood to the area. Okay. So, um, Mr. Moya, just give me one minute. Uh, let's go through a specific uh, with the 34th reason, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, so, Officer Aim, uh, the method operation includes um, DJ. Uh, recorded music, no karaoke, no jukebox, uh, live music. Uh, the place I know has been properly soundproofed. A uh, sound limiter will be installed. Uh, there'll be no third party promoters. Uh, security personnel will be in place. The hours of operation calls for. 5 p.m. through 4 a.m. Mondays through so through Saturdays, and then Sunday from 1 p.m. to 4 a.m. Then uh, the capacity is uh, 120. There'll be 34 tables and 68 chairs, and eight bar stools. And at that point, based on those uh, ideas. Uh, Officer Aim, what is the opinion of 34 precinct? Uh, quick question. How many uh, security guards will be uh, hired? Uh, at the moment, one. Uh, basically, we're just looking for somebody to, uh, Mr. Moya is looking for somebody to be at the door. Uh, it, it's more like uh, not as a protection because he's looking for, you know, to have an eatery. Uh, is is just to make sure because there's a, a location down the block which is Luxor and you have Cocina Tayel right next to them. So it's just to make sure that, you know, when patrons, you know, come out of each establishment, everybody, you know, gets home, you know, uh, without having any issues or there be no conflicts between, you know, any patrons leaving from other places or already intoxicated patrons. Uh, but if he's required uh, to add any other uh, security personnel, then it's something that's going to be uh, determined after the establishment opens up for business. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank so he you. actually he actually mentioned that he would like to set up a meeting with the with the thirty fourth. You know, maybe go over things and make sure that you know that everybody we work together. You know, uh, he's he's met with the owner of Cocina Tayel, met with the owner of Luxure. You know, uh, he's done the research in the neighborhood and and he feels like, that you know, this establishment is an opportunity for him uh, and is something that uh, could be beneficial to the neighborhood. Thank you so much. And uh, on that note, uh, Miguel, what is uh, Mr. Moya's experience with handling alcohol? Uh, Mr. Moya, you uh, you want to address that? Yeah, uh, so definitely. Uh, Understanding New York state law, law, I will hire a company to train staff. And also I will, re I will require every staff member uh, handling alcohol to be certified, to have all the, the appropriate training in order to do that. As well, I will be, you know, every day making sure that everything is handled uh, appropriately. Do you yourself, have you ever like worked uh, in this industry before? Yes, uh, I, I've done. I've been doing installations for restaurants and, and nightclubs for the last six, seven years. Uh, I understand how this business goes, 
And since it was a opportunity that came into me, uh, I'm, you know, trying to go forward for it. Very well. Uh, so you also have a uh, Cocina Tajer uh, right next to you. Yes. Uh, it's a really great uh, establishment, uh, at least based on my experience. And then on the back, you have uh, Patacón Pisao, and also you have uh, Taboga, or used to be Taboga. Uh, then you have Luxor, and you also have 10th Avenue. Um, I, I, w I would say that, uh, and again, this discussion we're going to have it once we go into community session. But the hours, I, I would, uh, I would check on the hours because uh, I think uh, beginning to have a family restaurant, uh, at least on my end, I would uh, have some idea about how late uh, you should be open. That'll be just on my end, but I think it's a little bit late uh, for some days of the week. But that's yeah. Important. Can have a discussion on, but before we yeah, walk, I've I've informed uh, Mr. Moyer with regards to the hours. We sat down and discussed uh, the hours of operation. Basically, you know uh, what he has done in certain researches that he has found out that the the liquor authority allows businesses licenses to operate till four in the morning uh, normally. So, what in the neighborhood? What he, his research uh, he he has. Uh, been able to find out that these businesses that are limited uh, in hours don't have an opportunity to say, okay, uh, business is well right now, it's two o'clock in the morning or it's one o'clock in the morning. And, you know, let's say on the weekends, on a Friday, you know, you, you, you have a good crowd and people eating and enjoying, you know, the, the kitchen is going to be open till, till late. So, uh, you know, sometimes you lose out on these opportunities. You got to kick everybody out by two o'clock. You're limited. You can't have a DJ. You can't bring in anybody to entertain each other, you know. So basically, uh, he's met with the people from Cocina Tayel. It's going to be similar operations. You know, the uh, I think Cocina Tayel also uh, is allowed to open till four in the morning. It's not that he's going to open on a daily basis till four in the morning. Uh, it's just... Right now, especially with all these demands uh, and requirements for you to sit in a restaurant and also have a limitation on your hours as well, it, it, it's basically just creating a, a downfall for a business. So it's not that the, the business is going to open every day. He just doesn't want to have limitations. You know, sometimes let's say uh, an event may come up and that event starts late uh, and you're limited to one o'clock. Now you got to close because it says on your license. Now you're getting a ticket and which is going to cost twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars because you pass your hours by 20 minutes. You know, so uh, it's just something that we can consider, you know, for for the applicants that are coming up. Uh, it's being allowed to be playing in the same, you know, on the same playing field uh, as other premises and not have limitations allows these businesses to be able to generate the revenue that they need in order for them to cover these high expenses. Uh, minimum wages have increased. Uh, rents nowadays have increased regardless of a pandemic. You know, besides the business owners suffering, the landlords are also suffering. So they're bringing up the rents. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's just something that they, he doesn't want to have to have these limitations. Uh, and, 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 I, the, and, and I can understand that. I, I understand yeah. the dilemma of, uh, of businesses because I'm, I'm very familiar. Uh, but that's something that I'll bring up uh, for discussion during the committee uh, session. Yeah, definitely. We also can be uh, very flexible with whatever. So uh, I see no hands uh, from residents. We have the input of 34 person, uh, committee members. Uh, for one, I would, uh, I have some uh, stipulations uh, that are common. Uh, first, yeah. a good sign. Uh, second, uh, a no double parking uh, stand because that area is really, yeah. really congested. And again, yeah, they have two parking lots actually uh, on the same uh, block. Still, I, I like to uh, call for no double parking signs to be uh, placed there. Okay. Uh, like, I also like to uh, ask that phone number be displayed, uh, not okay. only for patrons, but in case residents have an issue, that they will have someone in access to. Also, and, and Angel, I'll get back to you. Just give me one second. Uh, also, for the hours, I would recommend that uh, from Tuesday through Thursday, uh, that these hours be limited and not to exceed uh, 
you know, 2 or 3 uh, a.m. because, you know, this is uh, like, you know, uh, having that area congested uh, on 24-7 uh, might yeah. not be good uh, for the residents. So at this point, I Yeah, we could definitely that, work with that, Isidro. That Tuesdays, uh, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, and I'm leaving Monday because sometimes we do have a lot of holidays that fall on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Monday, I appreciate that. that. Uh, so on those three days that they will close at 2 a.m. Can we do 3 a.m., Isidro, please? Let, let me have a chat with the committee members to see what they what Not they, a problem. Thank you. Uh, Angel, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I think I wanted to just revisit the topic about security um, and just get a better sense. I, I know you said one person. Um, any any reason as to specifically one, would there be consideration to adding an additional person for security? I'm bringing this up because let, let's be honest, like our, our city is suffering right now when it yeah, comes, yeah. To, no, no. When it and, comes and to I, quality of life, when it comes to correct. when it comes to crime, there's a lot going on. No, um, no, and definitely. The, th the thing is, yeah, we, I mentioned that we that he will consider depending on if it's needed. You know, sometimes you say I'm going to have zero securities and end up putting two. And sometimes you're going to say I have three securities and I'm having none because the, the, the traffic that you're bringing in, it's a slow traffic. So you don't need security if you're getting three or four tables at a time and the turnover is slow. So right now, the way the restaurants are operating, you know, that's why we only considered one and it's basically adjustable depending on the, the movement that he receives. Understood. Hey, Mari, you have the floor. Thank you. I don't necessarily have a question, but I think someone in the community has their hand raised. I'm not sure if, if that was a new hand or not. Let me check. Um, do you know who that was? It, uh, it's Sharon Miller says, I wanted to say something, but you don't give me enough time to raise my hand. She said she wrote that at 8, 10 p.m. So literally as we're speaking. Okay. Um, Thank you. I you didn't give me enough. You were fast on that. Wasn't fast enough on the drawer. Okay. Apologies. Hi. Apologies. <laughs> That's okay. So thank you for letting me speak. Um. Yeah. My I just had um. My comment is just that um, it was I believe stated that it's going to be a family restaurant. So my comment is, if it's a family restaurant, why do you need to have live music and why do you need to have a DJ? That's first. Secondly. Um, I know that New York, the State Liquor Authority, does give um, a four, uh, you know, businesses to have up until a 4 a.m. closing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a 4 a.m. closing, um, right. especially if you're a new owner and you really don't have the experience in being in the industry. Um, and um, also um, with security people, um, my understanding is if you hire any security, they have to be New York State, um, I believe, certified. That's correct. Um, I'm just speaking these things from experience. I've gone through a lot of things with a problematic restaurant for years um, where I am. So yeah. I know a lot of this stuff. But the thing is that um, I just, you know, um, I, I think, you know, until the owners like kind of, you know, prove themselves to be like, um, you know, have integrity. I'm not saying your client doesn't have integrity, but, um, you know, until they can really show that they are um, good owners and respectable to the people in the community, um, I think that, you know, even being open to like 2 a.m., I think is uh, sufficient. I don't think, um, you know, that you have to be open till 4 a.m. I understand that businesses are suffering. I understand all of that. Um, but it's, you know, because Dykeman, I don't live on Dykeman, but I know it's very overly saturated. And so to just, you know, have that in mind. Um, thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Yes, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, can I address those uh, concerns? Uh, uh, yes, I und we understand your concerns, Cheryl, and thank you uh, for bringing these things up. And like I said, you know, I, I've seen businesses that have hours till 2 a.m. You pass by at 9 o'clock, they're already closed. It all depends on the traffic that they're getting and the turnover. And uh, the request that is being made 
to the community board is for permission in order for uh, the applicant to be able to have these things allowed in his establishment. It's not that it's going to be happening on a daily basis. Uh, for example, if I have a DJ, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to have a DJ on a daily basis. I'm not going to, they're not going to have live music on a daily basis. It's just being allowed uh, by the liquor authority with the recommendation of the community board. So in any event that somebody does one day want to have an entertainment or want to bring in a DJ or want to have a holiday party and you bring in a DJ and it, it doesn't violate the rules and regulations or the stipulations by the liquor authority. So besides the community board, the liquor authority has always the last call on allowing these applicants uh, to have what they requested on their licenses. You, I have clients that uh, have presented 4 a.m. and they go to the liquor authority and they bring it down to 1 a.m. So this is basically just the, the, the beginning process of this application. And right now uh, they have a long way to go. So uh, we appreciate the concerns of the community and, and uh, your, uh, neighbors. Uh, but basically, we're just trying to have everything in the open. So like that, at the end of the day, they don't say, OK, John came to the community board, didn't mention this, but he's doing it. So it's basically just uh, being an honest applicant applicant, uh, and hoping for the best and for the community support. Thank you so much, Amiga. And thank you, Asha Romilio, for your comment. Uh, so committee members, uh, my position as far as like uh, providing some recommendation for the hours, I would like to get some input from you as far as like uh, the recommendation of uh, having uh, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays be changed uh, to uh, 2 or 3 a.m. Please uh, give me your input. I think 2 a.m. is where I'm at for Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I second that with uh, you and Angel. I third that with you and Angel. I think 2 a.m. is yeah. ideal for uh, the area. I'm sorry, Leo. Um, I was just going to say, I also agree, especially with the soon to be school coming in the area. Got it. So, uh, Miguel, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll take, I will take the 2 a.m. You know, I, I understand the concerns and especially that concern with the schools and all that other stuff, you know, but uh, we appreciate it. You know, any opportunity that, that, that an applicant can get in order for them to be able to do business, as long as they can prove that they're good operators, maybe down the line, they could come and request additional time if they need it, which I doubt. And, and again, I'm a, I'm a supporter of small businesses. I know that area really well. Uh, we want to develop or redevelop that area because I know it has a lot of potential. We want to market that area. Sherman Creek has a lot of potential. Correct. Uh, but we also have to be uh, have a balance, and I think that we we have just done, done that. So we yeah. have three steps in place. Um, uh, quick question, Isidro, and I'm sorry before you go into voting. Uh, since the business, it's a long way from opening, uh, and I know most of the time you require these things before the general meeting. Uh, how can we address that? No, no need, uh, because what okay. I'm requiring is when you open, which is a good neighbor sign. Understood. Uh, a uh, no double parking signs to be posted uh, yes. on the sidewalks and also to display a phone number. Because I know that that place has been properly soundproofed. Uh, and I know that uh, it has also a sound limiter, so I don't have any problems with that. So based on these uh, three tips and the closing hours uh, to be uh, arranged as we recommended, for Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays until 2 a.m. Uh, should we go to straight vote if there are no positions? Saying that, let's do that, Angel. Isidro? Yes. Angel, yeah, I vote yes. Uh, Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. Uh, Chair, that's a vote of 600 in the affirmative. Thank you so much, Angel. Thank you very much. You have a great night and happy holidays. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank Good night. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Uh, next one, please. Sure. So next, we're looking at a new license. This is a restaurant wine license. Um, the applicant is Salento Colombian Cafe and Restaurant in Corp, um, located at 2112 Amsterdam Avenue at the corner of West 165th Street. 
Oh, excuse me. They actually withdrew, and oh. like I didn't have time to switch the agenda. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, Chair, want me to move on to the next one? So this application has been withdrawn, and thank you, Andrew. We'll move to the next one. Um, also, a new license. This is again restaurant and wine. Um, the applicant is Fito Restaurant Inc. Doing business as Fito, located at forty-seven thirty-six Broadway at the corner of Thayer Street. Is the applicant um, present or have a representative? Yes, we are present. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. For the purpose of the minister, please tell us your name and affiliation to this establishment. Sure. First and foremost, good evening, uh, Chairman Medina, Vice Chair Vasquez, uh, respected committee members, Maria, Leo, Robin, Samari, Ms. Paniagua, Lieutenant Jerez, and officers Aim and Officer Tavares. Thank you for your valuable service, everybody. So my name is Anthony Caraballo. I am the representative for this application, which is for beer and wine only. This is a transfer application of an establishment that's been licensed since 2017. Uh, they are located at 4736 Broadway. This is close to the corner of Arden. Uh, there is background music only. Uh, it's a small establishment. Uh, the capacity inside, there are seats for about 32 and the hours of operation will be closing at midnight, Sunday to Wednesday, and closing at 2 a.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. My clients, the applicants, are present as well. This is Felix Abarca and his wife, Fatima. Felix has extensive experience in, in the industry. He's lived in the area since 2009, well over 10 years. He has um, extensive experience in the food and beverage industry dating back to 2003. He's had various roles as a server, a bartender, a general manager. He's worked at Dallas BBQ, Il Sol Restaurant. Uh, locally, he's been at Tin Marin in Riverdale, Cocina Chente. Um, so he does have extensive experience. There will be uh, five employees. They'll all be local hires. And we'd be delighted to address any questions the committee might have. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Caravallo. It seems like you came very prepared uh, and you know uh, which questions to answer. Uh, and I'm glad uh, that the owner also has uh, extensive experience, but I didn't get uh, his complete name. What is uh, his complete name, sir? His name is Felix uh, Barca. Would you like me to spell it, sir? Uh, Felix, uh, what's the last name? Barca? Uh, uh, Barca, A-B-A-R-C-A. -A thank you so much. Um, let me go through the specifics of, uh, to let uh, the 34th person know about what is being asked. So Officer Amy, this is a, a capacity is uh, 36, seems like a very small place. Uh, the number of tables are 22. There will be 10 bar stools. And uh, you, you have five employees. The method operations include uh, Recorded music, and that's basically it. The space has been properly soundproofed. There'll be no third party promotion. Uh, there'll be no need for security guards. And again, the hours of operations is 3 p.m. Uh, Mondays through Wednesdays until midnight. And then uh, Thursdays through some Saturdays, 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. Then on Sundays, 3 p.m. until midnight. Uh, this is in a very residential area of the neighborhood. Um, so our aim will be the input of the 34 precinct. The 34 has uh, no objection to this establishment. Just uh, if you can inform the owners, just to uh, be aware that there are residential buildings above the establishment and to uh, just keep that in mind with the, uh, the music noise level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Officer Aim. Um, very well. Do we have any questions or comments from our residents? Seeing none, uh, let's go back into committee session and discussion. Uh, so committee members, they ask here, as far as like the meth operation, it's nothing uh, out of the ordinary, just uh, recorded music the hours of operations, 
the ladies will be on Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays until 2 a.m. The rest will be midnight closure. Very small place. Um, what is the input of the, com of the committee? Um, I just wanted to say that I appreciated hearing that um, the owners have management experience from Timarin. Um, it is a restaurant that I have had a lot of mother-son dates at. I, I, tried, I try to go once a month there. So um, I'm happy to hear that that's kind of like the school of management type of place that's coming to, um, to Inwood. Um, it's a well-run establishment with excellent food. So just shout out for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so, Mr. Uh, Caravallo, do you know if uh, this place has been, uh, will have a sound limiter in place? Well, it's background music only, Chairman Medina, so there's no need. It's going to be also low. This is a very small wine bar, and there is no need to have an elevated sound in any way, shape, or form at any time. When do you open? When do you plan to open? So our application um, will go into the state liquor authority, and like Mr. Acosta said earlier, the process is we apply for a temporary permit. So once the temporary permit is approved for the new applicants, they would do the actual closing for the purchase of the business, and then that's when the applicant will open. I would guess that should take place mm, probably uh, in mid January. Okay. Uh, so at this point, uh, I would like uh, for the following stipulations. Uh, one, a good neighbor sign. And again, uh, Mr. Carvalho, you can get this from our community board office staff, and they'll sure. give you a copy of it. And the idea is just to uh, put it like uh, visible in front of the establishment uh, for neighbors and patrons to keep uh, the noise level down. Um, also, a phone number or someone in charge to make sure that if there are any issues that um, they can contact immediately uh, so that the issue can be rectified right then and then. And uh, since this is a very uh, residential area, I would like to ask for a sound limiter to be installed. And the reason being is that, you know, this area, you will have a lot of problems if you have noise issue. And just to prevent that, I would like to ask for a sound limiter and that will be the, you need to uh, purchase a sound limiter and submit a copy of the purchase to the staff of the, com of the community board uh, office before the general board meeting. So that will be, uh, as I can see on the schedule. The general board meeting schedule for the 21st. So you, you need to submit a copy of uh, the purchase no later than uh, December 17th before 5 p.m. Okay. So again, it's, you don't need to have like uh, the, the unit itself. You need to show that you purchased a sound limiter with intention to install it. But because you will not be open anytime soon, we ask that you submit a copy of the purchase to the community board by Friday, December the 17th before 5, 5 p.m. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Caravaggio, if you do not submit that copy, I would ask the you know the board to consider uh, to vote against this resolution. I'm sure we'll submit it, Chairman. Okay, very well. So uh, with uh, those uh, three steps, unless any of the committee members have any questions, I would like to move uh, to, to a vote. Angel, please. Uh, Isidro. Yes. I vote yes. Simari. Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. And Mariel? Yes. Chair, a uh, vote of 600 in the affirmative. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Caravallo. I do hope that you prosper, that you bring something positive to our community, and I wish you and your family happy holidays. Thank you so much. And I'll wait to say this after the vote. You guys run a really good meeting. It's a tight meeting. Well done. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much. And you please proceed. Sure. Um, next, we have an applicant seeking a new eating place beer license. Um, the name of the applicant is La Pilita Deli Grocery Inc., located at 3866-3868 
10th Avenue at the corner of West 207th Street. Hello, Thank can you, you hear me? Do we have a representative? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, how are you? My name is John Angrisani. I am the attorney for the applicant, La Pilita and its principal, Myra Perez. Uh, good afternoon, or good night, I should, good evening, I should say, to everyone. Um, this is an application only for an eating place beer license. Um, and it's similar to what we were speaking about before in terms of a corporate change kind of new application. The current uh, establishment there is called La Lomita Grocery Deli. And the principal, Myra Perez, is the same for La Lomita, is the same person that's running La Lomita right now. The only reason why we're applying for a new license, and there'll be no change in any of the uh, method of operation from the old license, is because there was a lapse in insurance and there were some tax issues and the accountant basically um, told them that it would be better to close an old corporation and open up a new corporation. Uh, I'm sorry, for the purpose of the minutes, what is your name again, I'm sorry? John Andrisani, that's A-N-G-R-I-S-A-N-I. Very well, please proceed. Okay, so like I was saying, La Lomita has been there, I think maybe about 10 years. Um, they've never had any problems with the community board. I don't believe it. Their, their license has always been renewed. It's the same license that is being applied for in this application. Uh, the principal, Myra Perez, has been there since they opened up. She is going to continue running it. It's just a corporate, basically transfer from one corporation to the other. And to my knowledge, I've represented them, like, like I said, for I think maybe about a decade. They've never had any problem with the State Liquor Authority. I don't know of any problems with the police precinct. And basically, it's just going to continue as it was. It's recorded music, very little seating, mostly a takeout place. Um, they make very good food. I know that. And it's just, you know, it is, that's basically what is happening here. There's nothing that's out of the ordinary. So uh, the owners have been there for how long? I would say over 10 years, because they were there before they even had a license. Um, they, they were not selling any beer at all when they first opened up. They're but right this is, the, uh, the license that they had was uh, for off-premise. This is a completely different uh, license. This is on-premise consumption. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's the current license that they have right now is eating place beer, which allows both for off-premise and on-premise consumption. Meaning that if somebody wants to have a beer, sit down and have a sandwich or a taco or whatever it is, they're allowed to, and they're also allowed to buy and, and take out. Now, the reality is that, yes, this has mostly been a takeout place. They did have more chairs and tables prior to the coronavirus. But since the COVID-19 pandemic, they basically limit everything to a takeout. So although we're applying for an on-premise license, most likely in the beginning now, it's only going to be off-premise. Okay, just, uh, so just give me a, a, set, a couple of minutes so that I can review uh, the application with the 34th Precinct uh, because they need to have uh, the input to see what's coming to the area. Uh, so Officer Aim, this is with the purview of the 34th Precinct. Um, based uh, on the method operation, they are requesting uh, no jukebox, no DJ, no karaoke, no live music. Obviously no need uh, for sound limiter no need for security guards. Uh, this is a 24-hour operation, though. Uh, it's and, currently a 24-hour operation. And officer, uh, sorry, Mr. Rios, the capacity, mm -hmm. you put zero, but I see that you have seating arrangements there. So what is the capacity? Okay, so let me explain. The seating arrangements were done in our old application when we made the uh, alteration for La Lomita, right? And ever since the pandemic, they've removed the seats and chairs. Basically, it's become more of a grocery area than a seating area. So that's why in your questionnaire, it says seating capacity zero, because at this point, no one is going to sit there and no one's going to eat there because they just don't want to do it. It's just, you know, it's, there's not enough room to have really people sitting there and drinking beer when, 
you, you have to have social, you know, you have to have distancing requirements and, you know, vaccination requirements. So once the pandemic is over, it is hoped that they will begin to have seating as the diagram shows, which will be again, very limited seating and, and very limited table service as what, as is currently licensed right now. Okay, that's uh, what the license is right now for La Lomita. So do you have, uh, will the patrons have access to uh, the restroom? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, at this point, I'm going to uh, allow the 34th precinct uh, to give us an opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes, off the same. Uh, I have a question for the Rios Law Firm. So will there be any music played at the location? Um, right now, currently, I think that there's a small radio music. There's nothing loud there at all. There's no um, DJ. There's no live music. Uh, they've never had bouncers or anything of that type. Um, when they did have seating, there was very limited, you know, radio, basically. That's all it was. But uh, he's saying that, you know, that you have no music at all because you didn't... Uh you put that you will not have even recorded music. No, right now there will be no music at all. Okay. Obviously. Yeah, there's no, there's no one sitting there, so there's really no need for music. Okay, and as of now, are there people sitting down and, and consuming beer? You said no. all the tables were, were removed, right? No, everything was removed. Okay, so what you're looking to do is to put the tables back in the chairs so people could sit down and have a beer? If, if once the coronavirus restrictions are lifted, yes, we will look to put tables down and have chairs and tables, just as the current license allows for the current licensee, which is La Lomita. It's the same exact license. There's no change from the method of operation that's being applied for. Uh, okay. Committee members? I have a question. Yes. Sir. Um, if it's the same owner um, from La Lomita, why are we changing the corporation? Okay, like I said prior, sometimes there was a lapse in insurance. There were also some tax issues. Their accountant basically advised them that it'd be probably be best to change the corporate entity, close, the old corporation started new with a brand new corporation that that is you know complying with everything has all their documents in order so that you know to limit their liability in the future it's probably best to get rid of the old corporation create a new one and that's you know basically up front telling you know it is it is what it is okay thank you all right at uh, this point uh, I reco I'd like to recommend to uh, Two stipulations, um, just uh, to have a good neighbor sign posted on the premise and also uh, a phone number to be displayed. So if there are any issues with the residents and patrons that they can call someone in charge. Uh, and on that note, uh, unless other committees will have any other stipulations, I'd like to call to a straight vote. If there are no other questions. Seeing none, and you please proceed. Isidro. Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Yes. That was a very low yes, but I heard the yes. I hope everyone else on the record also heard yes. Um, Robin? Yes. And Mariel? Yes. Uh, Chair, that's a vote of 600 in the affirmative. Thank you so much, Angel. And now uh, we move to an uncharted uh, territory, which is to cover. Thank you, all. Thank you all very much for your vote. Thank you, Chairman and, and committee members. And I hope you all have a very nice holiday and, and, and New Year's. Thank you so much. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Sir. And we, we wish again that you do prosper. Uh, happy holidays to you and your family. And again, welcome to the community. Thank you very much. So. Uh, so now we're moving to a new, brand new territory, which is to cover uh, something that was under the complete uh, jurisdiction, and I'm sure it will continue, although, you know, the respective prisons to have uh, the request of uh, premises that require overnight stay or open until uh, sometimes 4 a.m. or 8, 8 a.m., so it all varies on different uh, areas. So the SLA, I... 
uh, I know that has requested that uh, for the premises that are requesting this type of uh, permit, it's a one-day permit, that they also get uh, some type of uh, recommendation from our municipalities, in this case, the community board. Uh, so the ask here is whether or not the community board would um, grant or approve or decide to uh, move in any direction uh, the applicants. Uh, so these applicants all have obviously legal license in place. I think that uh, since this is something new, what we must do is, uh, you know, ask questions about uh, how long they're going to stay open that particular night and uh, what plans they have for security and any other per uh, pertinent questions that you deem necessary. Um, so we uh, manage one at a time, and uh, Angel, let's proceed with the first one. Sure. Um, the first applicant is Enjoy Kitchen and Bar Corp, doing business as Enjoy Kitchen and Bar, located at 582 West 207th Street at the corner of Vermilia Avenue. Do we have a representative? Yes, good evening, everybody. My name is Ismael Bueno, representing Enjoy Kitchen and Bar. My sister is the owner. Welcome, Ismael. And you are the owner, correct? No, my sister. Your sister? Yes. And uh, what is your sister name, please? Marlene Bueno. Very well. So, uh, Ismael, you are asking uh, for the SLA to give approval uh, yes. to stay open on the 31st of uh, December for the purpose of uh, to stay late, of course, until what time? So eight in the morning. Hello. Yes, I, I am here. Yeah, uh, I, will, I will. Yeah, we will open uh, around eleven p.m. to close at uh, eight a.m. So eleven p.m. until eight a.m. Yes, that is the ask. Yes. Okay. And um, do you have any security personnel in place? Yes. We're going to have five security. And of course, they are raised with New York State, correct? Yeah, um, NYC. Okay. Uh, so the last time that you came to this community board was actually uh, uh, last month, and the community board didn't have any objection uh, to your renewal based on the facts that uh, it seems to have a very solid place. Uh, at this point, I would like to get the opinion of the 34th Prison Officer Ames. So, this is the first time that we're doing this, and I'm going to leave it up to you to see what kind of questions uh, you we should bring up and uh, what are the concerns. And on that, we're going to rely mostly on your opinion, Officer Ames. Uh, the only question uh, we have is, uh, what are the, uh, what, what's your, your plan for the night? Um, are you going to be having a DJ or are you going to have someone come and sing? Or what, what, do you, what do you guys have planned? Uh, I would like to, well, we would like to have a DJ to, you know, to give um, the customer, you know, like a, you know, a nice, happy new year. And you know our business um, need those extra hours. Um, need um, give the um, our, our customer you know to to spend the, the new year you know um, in a good place, have fun. Okay, so you're just gonna have a, a DJ. And will you have security there as well? Yes, we're gonna put five security. Um, two at the front door. Um, one um, searching the IDs and the uh, um, the vaccinated um car. The other the other one searching the customer with a um a metal detector, a hand metal detector. Um, okay. to be everything be. So everything could be on point. 
Okay. How many security in total for the night? Uh, five. About five. five. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. The three, four has no objection. Thank you thank so much, Officer Um So, uh, Angel, you have uh, five security records, right? One to check uh, with a metal detector, which I highly uh, recommend. Uh, you have two security guards to check uh, on the coronavirus uh, regulations uh, for vaccination, right? Yes. And the other two, what will they cover? Um, the other one w will be in the back door, and the other two will be like inside, just checking everything out. Okay, very well. Um, so, committee members, to ask here is to, uh, I, I'm sorry, Maria, you have a question, please. Yes, thanks, C.C. I mean, I can wait until later. Do you want me to ask now? Oh, no, please ask now. Okay, thanks. Um, so sorry if I missed it. What's the um, capacity of the location? Um, 74. Okay. Um, and then my other question is uh, for DJ. Um, uh, recognizing that you're asking for this license until 8 a.m. in the morning, how at, how long will the DJ be playing? Will the DJ be playing until 8 a.m. in the morning, or you plan on you know like till three? At what time will the DJ end? Um, or what are the plans? Kind of following up on the uh, the precinct's question for the D, particularly for the DJ. Um, well, the DJ will start like around 12. Mm -hmm. Um, we, um, maybe, um, he will leave around six in the morning. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. The reason I asked is because before obviously, that, uh, maybe sorry, before, yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe before that, it just depends on the crowd or how, how, you know. Okay. Thank yeah. you. I guess the only reason I ask is not just particular to your establishment. It's to kind of all establishments that will be having these um, events. Obviously recognize that, you know, it's the new year. Everyone, you know, there are people who are out celebrating, rightfully so, but there are also people who will be sleeping. <laughs> so yeah. um, just kind of I finding that, that right balance between, you know, allowing patrons to have a good time and enjoy themselves, but also, knowing when to kind of, you know, at least tone down the DJ a little bit or, you know, kind of turn yeah, it off sure. at a certain reasonable hour. Thank you. Yeah, I know. thank you. All right. Any other questions? Um, I see Cheryl Miller's hand is up. I She can go first. I, I have a question, but we can let the community member. Uh, it's All up right. to you, Chair. Sorry. I, I'm just well, willing thank to. You so <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Uh, Cheryl, you have the floor for two minutes. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Isidro, you had said early, because I had put uh, questions in the Q&A, and you said when you got to this section, um, I can address what I wanted to address. Well, so I, I, I heard what you said at the beginning about that the SLA has asked, uh, this is something new. Um, my question is, so how come it's only, it's four businesses? Um, so where all of the other businesses that are requesting permits, because I know there's a lot, I'm sure, in the 33rd uh, precinct curview, as well as the 34th. So where, so did those other businesses go directly to the precinct to ask for their permits? Because I know that that's how it's been done in the past, I believe, that any establishment that wants to apply for an all-night permit on New Year's Eve they need to go to the police precinct um, because, you know, a lot of these places, as you know, they have problems and, you know, the, the precinct has to weigh in because they're the ones that have to deal with all the, the issues. Um, so my question is, so where are all the other businesses? Did they go to the community board? And this is not uh, they're going around the, uh, you know, the community to weigh in. I'm a little confused. So my understanding is that uh, those businesses will still be required to go to the prison, but the SLA wants to have another layer of input, and that's why they have requested that the community board will have a say. Okay, so these four businesses, these are the only ones I'm assuming because today is December 8th, there's not going to be another licensing committee meeting this month. 
And I think the deadline for the permits is coming up in another week, I believe. They have to apply by the middle of December to get the permit. Um, so this is it. So it's just these four businesses. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Isidro. Thank you so much, Sharon. Committee members, I've done all the questions. I require I request that we go to a vote. And you please proceed. Um, Isidro? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Leo? I'll come back to Leo. Uh, Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. Uh, Leo? Sorry, Angel. I'm a yes. Okay. Um, Chair, that's a vote of 600 in the affirmative. Very well. Thank you so much, Angel. Uh, so, Ismael, congratulations. Uh, enjoy yourselves and your, and your establishment. And I hope everything uh, will be safe and sound and that you make a profit. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Happy, happy holidays to everyone. Thank you for the help. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate it. Not a problem. At this point, uh, we're going to proceed uh, with next agenda item. Sure. So our next applicant in this um, in this area is 211 Sport Bar Inc located at 3964 10th Avenue between West 211th and West 212th Street. Do we have a representative? Yes, you have um, Peter LaChapelle um, representing 211 Sports Bar and the owner, Francisco Guerrero. What, what's your name again, sorry? Peter LaChapelle. Very well. And you are the representative? Yes, sir. And the owner name is the owner's name is Francisco Guerrero. And uh, can you please uh, share with us what is the plan for this day and uh, what what are the operations that you put in place? Okay, the plan for the day is to um, hopefully open from eleven to seven. Um, we plan to have security, uh, about twelve security and one supervisor to cover all the areas, even the outside area of the restaurant. I'm sorry, how many is it currently? Um, 12 and one su supervisor. So we'll be in total of 13. Uh, and this is at uh, 3964. 10th Avenue, yes. And um, I'm not familiar with this place. Have you, are you Angel familiar with this place? Uh, Marielle? No, I'm not. I'm not familiar with the location either. The restaurant's name is um, 1111 Restaurant and Lounge. Uh, yeah, I know where that's, that is. Oh, okay, I think I, think I know where it is. Okay. So the plan here is uh, to open up from 11 p.m. Uh, to 7 a.m. Say yes. yes. And you have uh, 13 uh, security personnel, including a uh, uh, supervisor, to make sure that everything is safe and sound. Yes, sir. Very well. And uh, you're going to, are you going to have a DJ? Yes, sir. And to the same question that Maria asked previously, until what time the DJ will be playing? We say about into six, then just regular low music. Very well. Uh, Officer Aim, uh, this is within the period 34. What is the opinion of 34? So the Officer Aim with the 34, um, you guys pretty much asked the questions I was going to ask. Uh, so my questions are answered. So the 34 has no objection. Thank you so much, Officer Aim. Uh, do we have any questions from residents? Uh, seeing none, committee members. So let's proceed with a vote uh, if there are no objections. Thank you, please. All right. Uh, Isidro? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Thank you. Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. Uh, Chair, that's a vote of 600 in the affirmative. 
Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, next one, please. Thank you so sure. much, guys. Have a great day. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays to you as well. Um, second to last here, we have Margarita Mexican Tapas Inc. doing business as Brazier Ceviche Wine Bar, located at 3775 10th Avenue at the corner of West 203rd Street. Do we have a representative? Uh, yes, yes. Hi. Um, I thought that Annie was going to talk. Um, I am the owner. And for the purpose of the minute, what is your um, name? My name is Andrea. Um, I just want to ask Annie because we say she was going to represent me, but I, can, a, I guess I can have it. <laughs> not a problem, Andrea. And Andrea, what's your last name? Peralta. And you are the owner, right? Yes, I am. So we have uh, you know, a couple of simple questions. Uh, first one is, uh, what are the times that you plan to stay open? From what time to what time? Okay, so basically we're going to open around 12, about 11, 30, 12, um, 12 a.m. Midnight to, to 8, if you guys allow, allow right. it. Uh, we're going to have uh, um, 13 security. Uh, they are from NYC security. And we're gonna, we do want to have a DJ also. Very well. And basically, uh, our party is going to be, basically, it's going to be with friends and family. Because um, uh, we have, my family is big, and we have a lot of friends. So we just want to have something nice for friends and family. We're going to have, of course, we're going to have regular customers. But I'm sure I know everybody that's going to be there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrea. And Andrea, until what time are the DJ will be playing? I would say we're going to lower the music around 6 a.m. <laughs> and then, I mean, the DJ will stop around 6, 6.30 a.m. And then we might stay there, you know, just chilling, talking. and. Okay, so you, you have the DJ playing until 6.30 a.m. <laughs> and a uh, question for you. The security personnel, uh, how they're going to be street, like uh, in the front, uh, uh, in making sure um, that you uh, observe the COVID-19 regulations, also, uh, you uh -huh. know, age, uh, making sure that they have the proper ID and so on. How will you use uh, this security personnel? I mean, we are very familiar with this type of party because we do have party uh, on weekends on Friday and Saturday. So we usually have three security in the front door. Then we have our lady, um, she checks, you know, the ladies up there. I mean, because you better go upstairs <laughs> a little bit. And then we have inside on each corner, we keep uh, one security. We keep, keep another one around the bathroom. And because of that night is different, we might have, you know, we're going to have in total 13. So we're going to keep the others going around and making sure everything is okay. Okay. Um, well, that's it for me. Uh, now we turn to the 34 present. I was saying. I was saying with the 34, uh, all my questions were answered. Um, no, no objection. Thank you so much. Uh, unless there are no com uh, comments or uh, questions from committee members, I will ask the vote to three vote. Uh, Angel. Cedro? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Robin? I am going to do that. I'll come back to Robin. Mariel? Yes. yes. Okay. Robin, are you still with us? Yes. Okay. I'm here. How do, you, how do you vote? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Chair, that's a vote of 600 in the affirmative. Thank you so much, Angel. Uh, Andrea, congratulations. Uh, have a safe uh, party on your establishment, and I hope that you make a lot of money. Oh, my <laughs> God. I hope so, too, and I hope to see some of you guys there, too. <laughs> Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy. <laughs> Bye. 
Uh, please, uh, next one. The last one. Thank you, sure. Last but not least, we have FAA Bar and Grill Corp. Uh, located at 141 Nagel Avenue between Sickle Street and Hillside Ave. Um, do we have a representative? Sí, mi nombre es Fanny de la Cruz. Uh, what's your name again, sorry? Fanny de la Cruz. Fanny de la Cruz. Fanny. Fanny. F-A-N-Y. And you are the owner? Yeah, but I need translator because someone in English I can understand. Sí, buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Soy Lili. Bueno, no. Mucho gusto. Um, so, again, same questions. Um, until what time you're going to be open and until what time the DJ will be playing. De nuevo, les voy a hacer las mismas preguntas. ¿De qué horas van a estar abiertos? ¿A qué horas van a cerrar? ¿Y de qué horas va a estar tocando el DJ? Eh, estoy planeando, si me dan la oportunidad, abrir a las 11 p.m. hasta las 8 de la mañana a.m. If I get the opportunity, I would like to be open from uh, 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. And until what time should we be playing uh, the DJ? ¿Y hasta qué horas van a, el DJ va a estar tocando? Hasta ahora yo no tengo DJ, no voy a poner DJ. Uh, until right now, I don't have a DJ. I don't think I'm going to have one. Very well. Uh, are you going to have security personnel? ¿Va a tener seguridad? Sí, yo tengo una compañía, yo voy a reforzarla. Voy a poner cinco seguridad ese día. Yes, I, I have a security company, and on that day, I'm going to have uh, five security. Very well. Um, Muy bien. Let me check, because I don't know about this establishment. Uh, not familiar with it. I'm just checking the. Si me permite un momentito, uh, no conozco muy bien este lugar. Solo tengo un año abierto. I've only been open for a year. Hello. Officer M, this is the private 34 prison. What is the opinion 34? El oficial, ah, uh, Hanks. I'm sorry, uh, I cut the interpreter off. No, go right ahead. <laughs> this is the officer with the three four. Uh, I believe the establishment is uh, Caramelo. Um, yeah, I mean, all my questions were answered. Do they plan on getting a DJ or, or any other type of entertainment? Or is it just going to be serving food for the night? What, what's, what's the plan? Uh, so they have no DJs. Uh, but uh, Lily, please ask if they're Thank going to you. Have any other life uh, like that? Eh, el oficial del precinto 34 ga, ga, piensa que el nombre de sus uh, uh, restaurantes es, es el caramelo. Quieren saber si van a tener algún tipo de música, DJ, o si solamente van a servir comida. No, no vamos a servir comida. El papá de mi niña grande eh, sabe de música y me va a poner un playlist, me, eh, una computadora que va a tener seteada eh, como la música. Uh, no, we're not going to have uh, any DJs. Uh, my uh, oldest daughter's father uh, is going to play a playlist from the computer. Um, Officer Aim? Yeah, that pretty much uh, answers my question. Uh, just, you know, keep in mind the residential buildings above you. Uh, and that's it. No objection. Uh, no hay ninguna objeción del oficial del precinto 34. Una de las cosas que quiere es que tenga en mente que arriba de usted hay, um, es un lugar residencial. And uh, that's, that'll be uh, my concern. I just checked online and it's a, it's a five-story building that has at least, uh, I would say, maybe 30 units. Y esa sería una de mis preocupaciones, porque acabo de ver en la red de que hay 30 unidades en ese edificio. And, you know, those folks uh, deserve to have a good night's sleep. And y, I'm just about how loud the music will be. Y de nuevo, esas personas uh, necesitan dormir bien y tengan en mente uh, qué tan alta van a tener la música. Ok. Okay. 
do you have a sound limit installed? Señora, usted tiene un aparato especial de que um, res, uh, uh, hace que el sonido no resuene. No, yo no tengo ese aparato, pero yo busqué un personal que trabaja con la música y él me, me bloqueó, eh, selló como el, el bajo para que nadie pueda subir el bajo como el empleado. Si quieren poner música, no lo puedan subir. Y en mi oficina yo tengo un aparato que no sé cómo es que se llama, que no permite que suba, pero el, la cosa del volumen yo no lo tengo eso. So, uh, I don't have that machine. I do uh, uh, have some people come by and look at it. And one of the things that they have done is that the volume button, they can raise it up. I also have a, uh, this equipment in my office. I'm not sure what it's called, but uh, uh, the employees will not have access to uh, turn up the volume. See, it's it. It's basically the same thing. Uh, when they do that, the, the volume don't go up no more after decimals. Oh, okay. It's like a sound limiting. Exactly. All right. Uh, because this is a residential area, I request uh, one stipulation. Como ese es un lugar residencial, tengo una estipulación. Okay. And that is to put a phone number of someone that will be in charge in case residents have a problem. Uh, esa estipulación es de que pongan un número de teléfono Uh, si hay alguna preocupación a los a residentes de este local pueden llamarles. Okay. And, and that phone number has to be clearly visible on the outside, not inside. Y de nuevo ese número de teléfono tiene que estar puesto uh, en la parte de afuera uh, que esté visualmente uh, apropiado y no adentro. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, committee members, uh, residents, any comments from residents? Comentarios del comité de los residentes. Saying none. Uh, let's go into committee session. No hay ninguno. Uh, committee members, uh, based on the one step, uh, do you have any comments or should we go to stay vote? Hay algún comentario del comité? Saying none. Let's go to stay vote. And you please proceed. Y vamos a votar, así que vamos a seguir. Isidro, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes. Simari? Yes. Leo? Yes. Robin? Yes. Mariel? Yes. Chair, the vote is 600 in the affirmative. Thank you. Uh, el voto es 600 y ya se afirma el voto. Gracias por todo. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And we hope that you have a safe uh, holiday gathering for you and your family and that you also prosper and you do well. Uh, de nuevo, señora, que esperemos que tenga un buen día, próspero, y que todo le salga muy bien. Gracias para todo, igual. Wow. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. The Thank same you, to you. Thank you, Lily. Uh, hey, I got to do my job. <laughs> thank you, Lily. Uh, at this point, uh, committee members, thank you so much for your assistance. Uh, Simari, uh, please uh, do the minute as you uh, volunteer. Very grateful for your for your input. Uh, Angel will take care of the resolutions. I'll send Angel uh, the template to you later on. And um, we're gonna have a holiday party tomorrow. So we are. Uh, yeah, what time so, should I be there? Uh, six. <laughs> six. I think it's six. Uh, oh, so, yay! So I'm happy uh, to meet all of you. Uh, see, might I don't think that we have met in person. Not yet. Tomorrow we will. Tomorrow. And uh, again, it will be a great opportunity for us to mingle and to get to know one another so we can be on the same uh, page. And that is to uh, help our community, help our residents, our small businesses, and to make uh, this community stronger. That is the commitment that we have. Um, so I'll be very happy to see you all. Maria, I haven't seen not, I've not seen you like in the longest. Uh, <laughs> same with Lee. Leo, I, I don't understand that I saw you. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> and Angel, you and I met, but it will be. It's always nice to uh, meet up and have a drink here and there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, committee members, again, thank you so much uh, for your commitment. And at this point, if there are no objections, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Thank you, licensing committee. You guys are amazing. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays, everyone. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.